All right. Good morning. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I am on start. Are we rolling? Ah. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, this time I, I got a I got a pretty good night's sleep. I think. Fair to Madeline. Mm. So, goals today is to do as many things as possible at the same time, um, effectively. Because right. there's just no time to do all the things that need to be done. A lot of people can't appreciate, appreciate that, the brevity of human existence. Yeah. My god, how many of these things are you gonna hit me with before I can start playing? Jeez, all the ways. Do I look like I got money? Or inclination? <laughs> I do not. Have either. Um. I'm geschwitzed. <laughs> It's, it's funny, I, I know when I speak Yiddish, I think I have a southern accent. I've discussed it with my um, Yiddish-speaking relatives. <laughs> and uh, they, they've said thing, things like, you know, but that because some people are involved in Yiddish, Yiddish language preservation and stuff, they'll meet young people in the South <laughs> that speak some Yiddish. <laughs> and... Uh, and they start speaking it with a southern accent. <laughs> You're chopping, but the chips ain't flying. And it's, it's really hard to understand. And, uh, uh, dark is my ruby plot. <laughs> yeah, you can't understand it. <laughs> um, and I, and I know I have it too. I, I, w I was in uh, Beijing, and uh, th there was a real, you know, good Yiddish speaker at a uh, at a, a patient bond uh, uh, teaching English, and um, it, it happened that that uh, I used to get and, and he couldn't understand me. <laughs> um, In in Chinese, this is called the. Uh, um, well, there's a parallel to smilence. It, it, you know, it's like the the little sparkle. If you watch anime or whatever like that, when you see a character that has this little highlight right on the forehead, it's like there's some kind of. It, it means sweat, <laughs> right? But you can't. You know, you're. It's like sort of like being under pressure, and you can't really do anything. You just have to grant and bear it, as it were. Um, I, what, I, what I miss is, is like for years, since uh, for 30 years I have not listened to Yiddish around me because of changes. Um, that was a thread that was broken. Uh, a long time ago. And I, I'm trying to get back into it. Oh, man, I'm so close to upgrading my MD. Yeah. Ranking up. Oh my god, that's professional. Ninja Master. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, what do they want me to look at here? Man, see, uh, I'm doomed. I gotta do, okay, let, let's let's be sensible about this. Uh, capture five control points in one battle. That's the hardest dang thing. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I got all three of those. Okay. And then uh, use 100 acorns. I'm about to do that. But it's like I have to, I have to do it today. The, this is the last ends in 22 hours and 16 minutes. Um, upgrade a pilot level uh, five times. Become MVP seven times and two versus two death match battles. I've done it three times. Okay, that that means uh, that uh, I need to set up some two versus two this morning. That should be my goal. Two versus two and three fortune bolts. I only have to open one more. I'll spin the big wheel one more time. 
and upgrade the rank of a mech or a weapon two times. I'm trying to upgrade the rank one time. This is like, it's challenging to do this without spending money. Um, when uh, 15 battles with friends. Okay, so that. Yeah, okay. Oh, I've got to instantly drop everything and rush into battle. And it's going to be interesting because I think I've got some weird music here. <laughs> I'm going to bring the sound down a little bit. If you watch my music stream, uh, yeah, I, I've been working on the, the Phrygian Dominant. Uh, I, I believe it's the key of A. So this is a Phrygian Dominant uh, accompaniment, and, and, or, or it's, a, it's a backing track in key of A. Come on, buddy. Ouch! Man, he's hitting me. I should be able to hit him. There. <laughs> Okay. Mm. Oh, okay, good. I'm getting magazine. Let's go. Forehead. Ray Chaneke. Come on, Ray. Ah, no. Harry, you popped out. It's a hideous robot onslaught. Dang it. Nerf this. Is that a bot? Actually, no, this is not the, the key of A thing that I have. You spoiled my shield! Okay. Up. Uh, <laughs> bad shot. Poke it! Take him out! He's a bot. Maybe he's a bot, I'm not sure. Okay, we're getting clobbered here. What are you guys doing over there? Oh! Just about wiped out my shield, too. Dang it! That's gonna be a drag when all these robots are still alive and they all come up here at once. Yeah, that's how I like. Just... There's that little... Um, the th that's very kind of cool in the design that they have that little thing. It's like a metal robot arm or something hanging down there. And it, if they're there, it looks like you can hit them, but you can't. It hits that little robot arm. Yeah, stay right there. It's very... Look, what is this guy doing? Oh, I'm dropping on seat! <laughs> this guy has, like, no implants. What has he got named Arjigan with no implants for? Let me run down here and get killed by this guy. <laughs> missile rack 8 and a missile rack 6. Okay. Oh, shit. There's uh, I don't know why I'm going on. Uh, I've got to make an adjustment. Okay, yeah, it just yeah, and I I, I kind of it kind of slipped my mind, but.
that was one of my friends asked me to go in there. Missile Rack 8 and Missile Rack 6. Great. Yeah, I can understand that. God. working on it. Hold on. Zeno time? No. Am I ready for this yet? Thinking about it. No. How about this? Mm. What do you think? Yeah, I kind of like this one. <laughs> I like those, that little background vocal. Ah, ah. That's weird. <laughs> That's just a very nice touch. So my, my daughter has started to get up uh, she, she's done this a couple of times to get up at 7.30 um, so that means if I'm going to do a 4 hour stream I, I kind of need to be on at 3 a.m. so that's what I'm doing um, this allows me to kind of set an example uh in terms of, of trying to play guitar in front of her so she sees me working on stuff and practicing. Setting that example. Uh, the, this looks like it's just, you know, could be made for me. Uh, yeah. What are you doing? Well, you know, I'm trying different stuff. That's what I'm doing. Uh, I, I don't know how the... You know, I mean, people get on the chat and they theorize about how their game is, is working. But I have noticed that, that um, the game does sense, like, what uh, what's in the hangers of the participants. And it does something to figure out how to balance the match. Um... My idea, my theory is that they, they kind of want to, uh, or, or it would be a good idea if you're trying to get people to buy stuff, uh, to get them in the habit of uh, going through this purchase process, right? So um, if that's the case, I would expect I would get maybe some unexpected rewards from buying a lot of um, crap in here in the store. Um, with the credits that I have a surplus of. And, and I'm actually, another thing, it's another one of my objectives. See, I don't need, I don't have a Voltaic, Voltaic RPG. I'm just gonna scrap this. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. Let, let's see, and I don't have a disc launcher. I, those sort of annoy me. Um, you, if you watch my stream, you, you know the, uh, I hate arc torrents. I hate weapons that automatically just uh, hit you and do full damage <laughs> without any intervention whatsoever. Uh, uh, you know, I think a game, uh, you know, a good game that's like a good mental exercise should provide some kind of intellectual challenge, uh, but but at the same time, some kind of skill timing challenge like aim. Ch I do not use aim assist 
right? And I, I'll, I'll repeat this uh, uh, thing that I said before. I, you know, people get on and they're like, what the hell are you doing with the Aries Auto Cannon on a long arm? You know, and they, yeah, there's a lot of reasons behind why, why I do that. There's aesthetic. I think it, <laughs> in, at close quarters with the, the Auto Cannon, it's just funny. You know, uh, you know, I like to look at it and it makes for good footage and stuff like that. Um, but, um, also, I, I use it, you know, uh, it, it's sort of like a lock-on thing where I can see when the long arm's gonna gonna hit, right? So when I see those those numbers, when I'm when I've got an auto cannon on you, right? I've seen evidence that people are like, this is an auto cannon. It's not really lowering my, it's not really taking major hit points. It's not an arc torrent. And they'll do something, you know, they won't necessarily run for cover. So I have this little moment where I'm like, bah, 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 and they're like, I don't care. Right? But when I see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, those numbers coming up, then pop, I hit the long arm and I know my long arm is going to connect. So I use it that way because I'm not super fast reaction time like that should be. But I, I'm hoping with practice that I, I'll, I'll become. Um, I'll get the skill. What is this? I don't have any of these weirdo coins. What? I never get these. Um, never. Zero. Okay. Oh, but I can spin the big wheel. Yeah. No! Okay. Anybody that, you know, well, I, um, is this, do I, do I have that skin, that, that floral skin? No, that's, that, maybe that's my daughter's uh, panther that has that. But, yeah, I, I, when you spin the big wheel, uh, the, the, the probabilities in your favor in the in the five coin uh, fortune thing for uh, you to get money if you if you do the numbers and, and calculate it. Um, uh, big rewards uh, involve big risk. In other words, if you if you uh, spend for the larger uh, fortune vaults, if you go and you count and calculate in here. Uh, your probability of getting the big reward look how many more you can you uh, I mean do the numbers yourself I, I shouldn't just uh, do it for you but you can you can pick out your big reward in here look at all this these paint jobs I mean what are you gonna do with that most of the time you're gonna get in the probability that you're gonna get a paint job for a robot you don't even have <laughs> right is even pretty big and you can calculate that by going down you scroll down you count all the you know you look at what you want to get when you spin right you put that in the numerator uh and then you put the to you count that look how many are in here and you count <laughs> uh the total number that's the probability space or whatever like that and, and you calculate that ratio and that's the percent likelihood that you're going to uh, get the reward, particular reward that you're spending for. And look at all this. The percent, the, the chance you're going to get that big A coin, 750 A coins. Out of all that, these are the only A coin and uh, yeah, it's extremely unlikely that you're going to uh, uh, spend that. So it costs more and it's, it's the risk is bigger and the uh, uh, reward is bigger. Uh, but yeah, the probability that you're going to get the big reward is like zero. Well, I mean, close enough to be zero. If you had to eat on the, the money you would get, uh, if you, if you calculated that in pennies, you know, the probability could be pennies because it's a percentage. The maximum reward would be, um, the maximum, uh, probability would be, uh, Hundred, right? and, which would mean that every single win would be a hundred percent win, 
and it's not. Most of them are just a dead loss. Alright. Oh, let's check this out. Oh, what do I got? Open three fortune vaults. It's done. Okay, and let me review back here. Capture five control points in one battle. That's hard. Pilot levels, 100 acorns. Two versus two battles. 22 hours votes. I don't think I can do it. And, and all my pilots, I think, are sitting on a rank upgrade. So to in grade le, grade, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to rank up at least one pilot. Can I rank him up? Let's see. Seven thousand, not anywhere near it. Look at my pilot mark, seventeen hundred and seventy-five pilot marks. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna be able. To, okay, look, well, I can't raise her level. Um. And I can't rake up, rake up my MD, MD if I spend um, any of my A coins, right? But to rank her up, oh wait a minute, she's already ranked up to the top. So yeah, I could raise her level five times, but it takes A coins, and that would make me unable to uh, rank up my MD, which is also a requirement. All right, so yeah, 5,000 pilot marks I need here. And I've got 1775, I don't know how many of those. I could rank, okay, Rosa looks like the one that's my, my, my closest chance. I gotta pay attention to her. If I get some pilot marks, I, uh, uh, um, be able to get her, uh, uh, she could be my one that I level up. Let me see, Mako. Let's look at him. 5,000? No way. Um, Samson? Five thousand, no way. Five thousand. See, I have these pilots, but they're not they're they're not paired with Max right now. If I level him up, I'm I'm risking you know, so basically uh, by the end of today, um I gotta make some decisions, some difficult decisions. 5,000, no way. So, uh, he's a good candidate, right? And, and then Rosa. Where is she? She's not showing because she's paired with another Mac, is that what it is? I thought she was in this class. In the thousand and forty coin class. I don't have any of these Gonzo pilots. All right. Let's see what my friends list is doing. Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck was voiced by Mel Blanc. Yeah, Bugs Bunny and Porky Pig were also voiced by him. Isn't that cool? He could do his voice so differently that he could play multiple characters in the same cartoon. Guy was a gold mine. <laughs> All right. Oh no. What? Is nobody out there? Wait a minute, let me do this again. Team match. I got all these friends and not a single one is online at 4 a.m. in the morning. What's wrong with you guys? 
need to remove everybody right now. Um, it is Sunday, I guess. Um, three deathmatch tickets. Okay, it's got a little light there for, for two of them are online. I'm trying to get better at this. I'm going in. Reviewed the history of the Jews in Europe. Oh, in the first centuries, they had enjoyed full civil rights in the Roman Empire, and must have been considered worthy of such privileges, or they were degraded and deprived of their rights, first by the Byzantines, then by the German barbarians, especially by the Visigoths in Spain. From the Roman Empire, the Jews had brought more culture than the dominant nations possessed. They were not brutalized by savage feuds, the nor was their progress retarded by monkish philosophy and superstition. The in Spain, amongst Jews and Arabs, there Morning. had existed a more remarkable culture than in Christian Europe. Young then reviewed the false accusations and persecutions against Jews in the Middle Ages, painting the Christians as cruel barbarians and the Jews as illustrious martyrs. After touching upon the condition of the Jews in the various states, he concluded this delineation of the War. works. Dr. War. These principles of exclusion, equally opposed to humanity and politics, which bear the impress of the dark centuries, are unworthy of the enlightenment of our times, and deserve like no longer to be followed. It is possible that some errors have become so deeply rooted that they will disappear only in the third or fourth generation. But this is no argument against beginning to reform now. Because, without such beginning, a better generation can never appear. John suggested a plan whereby the amelioration of the condition of the Jews might be facilitated, and his proposals form the program for the future. In the first place, they were to receive equal rights with all other subjects. In particular, liberty of occupation and in procuring a livelihood should be conceded then, so that, by wise precautions, they would be drawn away from petty trading and usury, and be attracted to handicrafts, agriculture, arts, and sciences, all without convulsion. The moral elevation of the Jews was to be promoted by the foundation of good schools of their own, or by the admission of their youth into Christian schools, and by the elevation of adults in the Jewish houses of prayer. No. But How it they was being upon Christians yeah, it's kind of and other no, effectual means here. that they were to regard this as about, I'm locked up. Look at that. Total fro froze. As oh. a matter of course, John desired Terror. to see freedom in their private religious affairs granted them, free exercise of religion, the establishment of synagogues, the appointment of robot Jews, mayhem the of their poor, if considered wise, under the supervision of the government. Even the power of excluding refractory members from the community should be given to Boga Boga, we won. Dom, moreover, pleaded for the continuance, under certain restrictions, of independent jurisdiction in cases between Jews, the power to be vested in a tribunal of rabbis. He wished to debar them from only one privilege, from filling public offices, or entering the arena of politics. The ability to undertake these duties, he thought, was completely lacking in their generation, and would not manifest itself very conspicuously 356 in the next. Besides, there was a superabundance rather than a lack of competent state officers. For this reason, it would, for the present, be better both for the state and the Jews if they worked in warehouses and behind the plow rather than in state the offices. Che. The immediate future disproved his doubts. Don Somebody watched Homestar Run. Right. Uh, uh, well, I think that, you know, the cheat was a character for Homestar Run. He therefore submitted it to the wisdom of the old flash who at this time Ouch. were inclined to progress and enlightenment uh, of the people. So annoying. Don was filled with the seriousness and importance of his task. He was positive that his proposals would lay the basis not only for the welfare of the Jews, but also for that of the states. It is not to be ruled that Mendelssohn stood behind him. Even if he did not dictate the words, yet he breathed into them his spirit of gentleness and love of mankind, and illumined the points which were strange and dark to dumb, the Christian and political writer. Mendelssohn is, therefore, to be looked upon, if not as the father, certainly as the godfather, of Dom's work. It was inevitable for such a treatise to create great Now you're wrong, my shell. Must not this demand to treat Jews as equals have appeared to respect both Christians as a monstrous thing? As if the nobility had been asked to place themselves at the same table with their slaves? 
soon after its appearance, Gum's work advocating Jewish emancipation became extraordinarily popular. It was read, discussed, criticized, and refuted by many, and approved by only a few. The first rumor was that Dom had sold his pen to the Jews for a very high price. That's got, he oh, it's Dr. War. Help. Settlers. Fortune began to smile upon the Jews after having turned 357 its back upon them for so many centuries. Scarcely had the pamphlet to play when Emperor Joseph, wow. the first Austrian ruler to allow How himself in some degree to oh, be guided nine. by moral and humane okay. principles, having snapped asunder the yoke of the Catholic Church, and having accorded a toleration edict to the Protestants, issued a series of laws relating to the Jews, which displayed sincere if rather fierce philanthropy. By this new departure, October 19, 1781, the Jews were permitted to learn handicrafts, arts, and sciences, and with certain restrictions to devote themselves to agriculture. The doors of the universities and academies, hitherto closed to them, were thrown open. The education of the Jewish youth was a matter of great interest to this emperor, who promoted philosophical morality. He accordingly decreed the establishment of Jewish primary and high schools normal schools, and forced adults to learn the language of the country, by decreeing that in future only documents written in that language would possess legal force. He considerately removed the risk of all possible attempts at religious compulsion. In the schools everything that might be offensive to any creed was to be omitted from the curriculum. An ordinance enjoined November 2nd, that the Jews were to be everywhere considered fellow men, and all excesses against them were to be avoided. The leisure of body tax, more humiliating to Christians than to Jews, was also abolished by Joseph II of glorious memory, in addition to the special law taxes, the passport duty, the night duty, and all similar oppressive imposts which had stamped the Jews as outcasts, before they were to have equal rights with the Christian inhabitants December 19th. Joseph II did not Moscow. intend to concede complete citizenship to the Jews. There's my COVID swab. Those cities which Christian intolerance 358 had hitherto banished them. I had somebody named COVID test. It's like I look at my long arm and I'm like, hey, that's my COVID swap. Trust me. So let me take a minute. Just tilt your head back. There you go. It's done. I'll get back to you with the results. <laughs> A Jewish wholesale merchant, <laughs> notables, and their sons, to wear swords January 2nd, 1782, and especially insisted that Christians should behave in a friendly manner towards Jews. Oh, shoot. Notable that was a bad reaction time, really was. The ignominy of a thousand years, which the uncharitableness of the church, the avarice of princes, and the brutality of nations had cast upon the race of Judah, was now partly removed, at least in one country. Dom's proposals in consequence met with earnest consideration. They were not regarded as ideal dreams, but as political principles worthy of attention. Scholars, clergymen, statesmen, and princes began to interest themselves seriously in the Jewish question. Every thoughtful person in Germany and elsewhere took one side or the other. Various opinions and ideas were aired. The most curious propositions were made. A preacher, named Schlager, wrote, I have always been averse to hating an unfortunate nation, because it worships God in another way. I have always lamented that we have driven the Jews to deceive us by an oppressive political view. Okay. What else can they do in order to live? Thank you. Beyond those souls, you bought a One of the noblest men of that epoch, afterwards Prussian ambassador to the Turkish court, thought that Dom had asked far too little for the Jews. 359. You were most truly, he remarked, that the present moral depravity of the Jews is a consequence of their bondage. Garneta. 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 Sorry. The Christians would have been useful. Certainly it is not less than that of the Jews, and rather the cause of the latter. John von Emler, the talent of historian of the no. Swiss, with his wide attainment... I would like to give Roundhouse the opportunity to check out my COVID swabs. ...praised John's efforts on the of the Jews, and supplied him from the treasures of his knowledge with new fruits and... Oh, let me reload my swab. <laughs> ...and their demoralization by a tolerable tyranny. He wished the writings of Amy, the author of the Jews, to be translated into one of the European languages. Naturally, hotel pamphlets were not wanting. Especially ah! was an abusive tract, published in Prague, entitled the Prague This is the guy that was on our team before. He's a bard. Stop! Go away! What, what kind of dumb stuff was that? Oh, shoot. Wise guy, eh? There you go. See, that was the thing of, I, I knew I had a shot on his deflector, so I hit his deflector, and then the next pop, 
I was able to hit his front armor. Ah! He just took my shield down. Dang it. Get away from me. And he's going to drop a turret. Well, no, he's not going to drop a turret. He's dead. Phew. Uh -huh. Was Match 3 on a revenge mode thing? I think he was. Shatter. Shatter. Now, my, my theory is, is that Shatter is going to do something stupid to try to come towards me. Yeah, see, he just uh, he... Come on, Chatterer. You know you... Oh, please. Uh, please don't kill me. I'll do anything you say. Uh, come on. Got her, Nathan. Well, it's close. <laughs> My goodness. It is hard to say whether it is to be called insensibility, intellectual dullness, or malice when Mike Callis blurts out with it. It seems to me that here in Germany... Hey, uh, is Macarena Dario there? Hey, man. Is that you? Hi. Um... Cool. Man, I'm sorry I missed your, uh, comments, uh, last time. That ruins it. You know what I mean? The cool thing that I, I keep saying is that... Um, okay, I'm gonna see if he's still there. Uh, uh, okay. I'm trying to listen to this book at the same time. And I, I can't do it. That, 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 you know... I, I, I've been observing uh, the, the, the threshold. Are you there? Hi. Is he still there? trying to chat with this guy. <clears throat> Man, I need a two versus two. Did you add me? I, I don't know what your Macarena name is. You should tell me. And guys, if you're if you're following my my uh, uh, stream, uh, you know, let's get to brass tags. Man, let's, you know, I want you to be able to jump in the game. And uh, what I'm practicing doing is filming you right you know that that to me is like a very interesting skill like uh you know like if i've been playing sniper my skill is stronger as sniper oh don't let this guy okay i want to get as far away as possible oh shoot i'm locked up okay good good riddance see i was trying to escape that guardian oh god Come on. Salt licorice, man. Good morning. How you doing? <laughs> uh, Momak. Uh, yeah. Oh, shoot. And I had no shield. Uh, I deserved that. I really, really did. Thank you. Man, I really need that. Look, look at these guys. You're beautiful. Almost got him. Come on, Moomak. You know you want to step out there. Oh, good. Somebody got him. He was knocked down a little bit. Ouch. <clears throat> um. Ah! Uh. Oh! See, that's where you shoot your own people. There's that scene in Stalingrad where where there's two guys that are they're in combat. These two Nazi uh, soldiers are Vermont. No, I, I shouldn't say Nazi, you know, because they're 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 you know they're just in the army or whatever. they're not necessarily in the, in the Nazi party or whatever. And I think that's one of the apologist things about that movie, which I have mixed feelings about. But uh, the guy's like, "Stay here and don't move and shoot anything that moves." <laughs> guy's like, "Okay," and the guy runs off and he says, "Oh yeah, one more thing." Turns around and the guy machine guns him. And then he starts bawling, crying. The guy comes back, he, another guy comes back, he's like, run, run, run! And the guy's sitting there crying. So I got to shout out my best friend. He's like, oh man, I did that a bunch of times, man. Stop crying, let's go.
the the weird you know like Eric von Stroheim um, um if you if you don't know the story about uh, Eric von Stroheim he's a, he's a, he's like a giant of cinema right but he was he was Jewish and he was a deserter of the German army right so he was in the the German military Stroheim was. Uh, and, and he ran off and uh, immigrated to the United States. Well, of course, he didn't land, uh, you know, and say that he was Jewish <laughs> and that he was a military deserter. He he did this great, you know, he had like an acting routine where he acts like Austrian nobility to people that don't speak Austrian. Uh, he's like, you know, they don't know. I can just add, uh, pose around like a, like a, a you know, jack thirded military guy, and uh, and they'll fall for it. Well, uh, this is related uh, to Stalingrad. I was uh, kind of need to drink more water. Uh, I'm. The, the story is, is I, I kind of, you know, I don't obsess about fast food, uh, and my wife eats it all the time, and, uh, you know, if she rushes me out of the house and I haven't eaten too, I don't obsess about it, so if, if we go to McDonald's, you know, she buys me something, I eat it. Well, you know, the last couple of weeks, for whatever reason, you know, she takes us to McDonald's several times, and... Um, and Wendy's four for four. We had one of those, and um, and then the the crowning glory was Stevie B's uh, uh, buffet. And I kid you not, I stepped on the scale and I was up. Dang it! Mm. I was up seven pounds. You jerk, Muma! How humiliation is that? Okay. Hey, Muma. Come on, I want to have a word with you. Ha 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 ha. Oh shit! I should not have gone across there. That was stupid. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> Whoops. Ha uh ha. -huh. I love you. Um. But yeah, you know, just just a couple of times, a regular McDonald's. It's like each time you eat McDonald's, you flat gain weight. So it's just like every single time you do it, it's an imbalance in the favor of uh, getting heavier. Good. This Zephyr armor is like 10 for him. It's, it's really a close quarters thing. Come on over here so I can... I've got an impulse, right? So I, I can... Okay, dang it, my dang, somehow I locked my, uh, shoot, man, they tore us up right now. Okay, so back to Stroheim, you know, Stroheim, uh, was Jewish and a, a deserter from the German army, and he came over and presented himself as Austrian nobility, he's not the kind of character that Chomsky would approve of, right, but Chomsky, uh, often makes, uh, um, discourse on propaganda, right, and Stroheim was a supreme expert uh, propagandist you know uh, you know and 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 you know he probably hated he would you know he probably person one of the reasons he's so good and knew the kind of people that he represented so well is probably because he hated them right because as a propagandist he was representing you know the Nazis before Nazis the kind of uh, 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 German or Austrian uh, military person uh, Nietzschean, totally ruthless, you know, the, the, the blame the problem for health on the health, the health care problem on the sick, <laughs> kill the sick, the weak, you know, oh. this could be tough. So Str Stroheim um, famously was the man you love to hate. You know, he was uh, 
he came over before World War I started to represent uh, Germany in the, uh, in, the pro in the U.S. propaganda to make people really uh, get on the, on the bandwagon for war against Germany. And uh, he's the kind of person that Chomsky really reviles. Um, and I, I think it's a great example of, you know, Jews aren't this, this uh, monolithic, you know, they're not all in it together. You know, what that's bull crap. They're, they're just people. And they, have, they have different uh, motivations and stuff. And, you know, if Chomsky had been where Stromheim was, you know, he might have been. Oh! Man, that's nasty. Who's that? Better be careful. I don't know what these guys, who they are, or what they have got. Oh, God. This guy's got... Oh, they're all the way over here. God. Somebody got him. Good. See, that was the thing where I was, I, I, I saw the, the numbers coming from the, the machine gun hits and then I hit, I clicked uh, the long arm and it connected. Right, you see the numbers, as soon as you, as soon as you see the numbers drop, yep, you, you, you hit the long arm and, yeah, usually it works. Ouch! Mm. I'm dead. These guys are manings. Ruthless. Okay, he wised up. Okay, I'm in a bad spot right now. Oh, jeez. Okay, he's coming out. They've engaged him. Right. Pow, there. Ha, ha, ha. Gotcha. Ah. Uh, Ninja master. Hmm. Man, wow. That was a good connect. Just please don't shoot at me. Oh, here he comes. Oh, no. Kill him. Yeah, good. And he was probably mad. That's why he got killed so quick. Because he was doing his kamikaze onslaught. I'd do that too. You know, sometimes I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to empty my magazine. Oh, man. And it's kind of funny. It makes good footage for the stream. But it, it's strategically, it's impossible. I'm very vul okay here comes this guy yeah and he's mad look okay I'm dying oh, I thought I was dead oh man I'm doomed help if he comes around that corner man I'm dead here he comes oh somebody got him oh you're beautiful I love you I, I was looking at my map in case you wonder how I knew that I do try to glance at the map I'm real bad at that. It's a skill I'm working on. Um, you know, the, there was some guy that said, every five seconds, you should look at the map. One, two, three, four, five, glance at the map. One, two, three, four, five, glance at the map. So, good. Now we're winning. All right. Maybe. Oh, no. It's still neck and neck. Mm. Somebody was hanging out in the hangar. <laughs> Choosing their outfit. I think I get coins for, uh, you know, having no hit points and staying alive. Yeah, you know, it says you deal damage when you have no hit points left. It's some kind of badge you get. I don't know if it's on my objective list. Uh, I'm 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 playing like I'm not on a big team, which is there. Uh -huh. Abacadaba? What is this? Abba Abba Abacadaba Hassan? Oh! 
don't want my shield. If I get hit at all, I'm going to die. Oh, here they come. Help. Somebody kill him. I need a medic over here. Uh, I'm going to die. Help. I hit my thing, but I didn't. Yeah, I hit my thing twice. And then it... And, I don't know if my mouse is dying or what. I'm gonna check out my objectives. I'm trying to remember to always do that. Leave it. Don't don't stay on team. Cause um, yeah, I found that the the pattern generally is that uh, when people get called to a match uh, so the person that that uh, that started the whole thing has a particular thing they're trying to get their objective right so they want to jump out and see if they got their objective and buy their you know if they got their coin or whatever they want to buy their stuff um, okay I need to get my book started again. I guess I, you know, I missed that guy again. He he was saying uh, Macarena Dario started started up, and I missed him again. Uh, Pisses me off. Agitation excited by Don and the views pro and con had only resulted in forming public opinion upon Judaism, and this affected not Germany. Like that's gonna help. Uh, I, I need I need five thousand, buddy. Of historical events. The venomous Alsatian district judge wished to have the Jews of Alsace annihilated, and through his malice he actually facilitated the liberation of the Jews in France. Mendes imprudently kept himself in the background in this movement. He did not desire to have attention drawn to him as a prejudiced defender of his brethren in religion and race. He blessed the outbreak of interest in his unhappy kinsmen. Bless the almighty providence that has Five allowed crates. me, at the end of my days, to see the happy time when the rights of humanity I'm never begin be able to be realized in their true extent. However, I've got to join a clan. Into British silence. He found that the arrows hurled by Dom had been insufficient to pierce the thick-skinned monster of Jew hatred. I, I'm in a clan with my, my daughter, and, and I hope that uh, and I'm going to stick with it. You know, I'm just going to hang it up because uh, it's the Kudawojo clan, and I hope that some other people will join it. But they need to be named Kudawojo. That would be cool. Christians in their self-glorification were wont to assert. In a very clever way, Mendelssohn made not alone the GTN scholars Michaelis and Hartman, but also Dom, understand that they had misconceived the Jewish question. It is wonderful to know how prejudice assumes the forms of every century in order to act despotically towards us, and place difficulties in the way of our obtaining civil rights. In superstitious ages we were said to insult sacred objects out of mere Ice wilderness, cream fact. to pierce crucifixes and cause them to bleed secretly to circumcise children 362 and stab them in order to feast our eyes upon the sight. To draw Christian blood for our Passover. To poison wells. Now times have changed. Calamy no longer makes the desired impression. Now we, in turn, are upbraided with superstition and ignorance, lack of moral sentiments, taste, and refined manners, incapacity for the arts, sciences, and useful pursuits, especially for the service of war and the state, invincible inclination to cheating, usury, and lawlessness. All these have taken the place of worse indictments against us, to exclude us from the number of useful citizens, and reject us from the motherly bosom of the state. They tie our hands, and reproach us that we do not use them reason in the spirit of research of our century, and not yet he doesn't love me. all traces of barbarism in history. Many a legend of the past has obtained credit, because it has not occurred to anyone to cast doubts upon it. Some are supported by such important authorities that few have the boldness to look upon them as legends and Bibles. Even at the present moment there is many a city of Germany where no circumcised person, even though he pays duty for his creed, is allowed to issue forth in open daylight unmatched, lest he kidnap a Christian child or poison the wells. While during the night he is not trusted under the strictest surveillance, owing to his well-known intercourse with evil spirits. The second point in Dom's memoir which did not please Mendelssohn was, that it demanded the recognition of the state for the Jewish religion, in as much as the government was to grant it the right of excluding unruly members by a sort of excommunication. This did not harmonize with his conception of a pure religion. In order to 
counteract the errors of dumb grown men to apology yeah. and the obstinate misapprehension of the Jews as much as possible. Mendelssohn caused one of his young friends, the physician Marcus Hurst, to translate from the English original the Vindici Dumbum of Manasseh Ben Israel against the numerous slanderous charges brought against them. He himself wrote a preface full of luminous, glowing thoughts March, 1782, called the Salvation of the Jews, as an appendix to Dom's work. Manasseh's apology was buried in a book Lil Reed. Mendelssohn made its excellent truths known among the cultured classes, and by a correct elucidation gave them proper emphasis. In this preface he insisted, that while the church arrogates the right of inflicting punishment upon its followers, religion, the true 363 faith, based upon reason and love of humanity, requires neither an arm nor a finger for its purpose. It concerns only the spirit and the heart. Moreover, it does not drive sinners and renegades Good. from its doors. Finally done. Without knowing the whole extent of the harm caused by it in the course of Jewish history, Mendelssohn detested the interdicting power. He therefore assured the rabbis and elders to give up the right of excommunicating. Alas, my brethren, you have felt the oppressive yoke of intolerance only too severely. All the nations of the earth seem either too to have been deluded by the idea that religion can be maintained only by an iron hand. You, perhaps, have suffered yourselves to be misled into thinking the same. Oh, my brethren, follow the example of love, as you have till now followed that of hatred. Mendelssohn now held so high a position in public opinion, that every new publication bearing his name was eagerly read. The fundamental thought of the preface in the mass of Ben Israel's vindication, that religion has no rights over its followers and must not resort to compulsory measures, struck its readers with astonishment. This had never occurred to any Christian believer. It's the fierce of snack attack. Zalkipper and others gradually fell in with the new idea and tendered its originator public applause. Oh, that's close. The and obdurate minds, on the other hand, he felt there in the destruction of religion. All this is new and difficult. First principles are denied, said they. In Jewish circles also many objections were made to Mendelssohn's view. It seemed as if he had suddenly discarded Judaism, which certainly owns an elaborate system of penalties for religious crimes and transgressions. Dang it! From the Christian camp, a pamphlet called Inquiry into Light and Truth was launched against him, which asserted that he had finally dropped his mask, that he had embraced the religion of love, and turned his back upon his native faith, which exaggerates and punishes. 364 A second time, Mendelssohn was compelled to emerge from his retirement and take his views upon religion. This he did in a work entitled Jerusalem. <sighs> I was scared. Snack attack. Spring, 1783. This period of contents. The dreaded. Snack attack. Help. The gentleness that breeds through Please don't kill me. The warmth of conviction. The frankness of utterance. Its childlike ingenuousness. Yet profoundly thoughtful train of ideas. The graceful style which renders even dry discussion enjoyable. LLB's qualities are a contemporary approval for this work. And will always assure it a place in literature. I should not turn I don't like that and expose my flame. It's stupid. Okay, my shield's gone. Yeah. Death. If he had not entirely broken mm. away from Judaism, had yet declared many things therein to be worthless. He now showed that he was an ardent Jew, and would not yield a tittle of existing Judaism, either of in or biblical. That he, in fact, claimed the highest privileges for it. All this was in accord with his peculiar method of thought. Judaism recognizes the freedom of religious convictions. Original, pure Judaism, therefore, contains no binding oh, well. of belief. Oh well. Oh my no guys got killed. All three of them. I was going to try to go get some hills. Help! Duty. Mm. Judaism prescribes not faith, but knowledge, and it urges that it's... I shall return, boy. In this boy. Religion, everyone may think, okay, and or as he pleases, without incurring the guilt of heresy. It's not nah. inflicting punishment begins only when evil thoughts become acts. Why? Because Judaism is not revealed religion, but revealed legislation. Its first precept is not, thou shalt believe or not believe, but, thou shalt do or abstain from doing. In the divinely ordained constitution, state and religion are one. Not unbelief, false teaching, and error, the wicked offenses against the principles of the state and the national constitution are chastised 365 with the destruction of the temple, I. With the downfall of the state, all corporal and capital punishment, as well as money fines, ceased. The national bonds were dissolved. Religious trespasses were no longer crimes against the state, and religion, as such, knows no punishments. For those who seriously or jestingly had reported that Mendelssohn had separated from Judaism, he laid stress upon two points not wholly germane to his subject. Is that the so-called ceremonial law of Judaism is likewise, indeed particular, Gonna die. of divine origin, and that its obligatory character <sighs> must continue until it pleases the Supreme to abrogate it as plainly and publicly as it was revealed. 
The effect of this He's coming for him. was greater than Mendelssohn could have expected. Instead of defending himself, he had come forward as an accuser, and in a manner at once gentle and forcible, he had laid bare the hate Classic of the example, and state like the Fenestrate you came across the field the of the on his revenge program. And the subject which he was discussing. When he got to me, he had, he had very little hit points left. I hit him one time and he died. Argument, its refinement, and cleverness of composition. Stay back. I consider this book the herald of a great reform. Oh, not alone good shot, Morty. But also others. You have succeeded in combining your religion with such a degree I hit him of too. conscience as was never imagined possible, and of which no other faith can boast. You have, at the same time, oh. so thoroughly and clearly demonstrated the necessity of oh. unlimited liberty of conscience in every religion, that ultimately our church will also be led to reflect how to remove from its midst everything that disturbs and oppresses conscience, which will finally unite all men in their view of the essential points of religion. Oh. Mike Where's Harris, this guy? The rationalistic anti-Semite stood baffled, We're getting embarrassed, and ashamed of the ideas of Jerusalem. Judaism, which he had scornfully disdained, now honestly and victoriously raised its head. The Jew Mendelssohn, whom he would not have trusted with a penny, appeared Good. with the 366 incarnation of conscientiousness and wisdom. Michaelis was sorely perplexed in passing judgment upon this remarkable work. He was obliged to admit many things. Thus, without selfish motives, impelled only by circumstances, Mendelssohn glorified Judaism and shook off disgrace from his people. In the meantime, Dom was aiding him. He continued to expound Judaism in the most favorable light and refute all objections, the honest as well as the malicious ones. He had come to regard the quarrel as his own. But Dom affected most by enlisting through his writings in favor of Jews the sympathies of Mirabeau, a man with shoulders strong enough to bear a new system of the world, and he continued the work of Dom. At the same time, and in the same way, that is, indirectly, Mendelssohn again urged the internal rejuvenescence of the Jews, which was to accompany their emancipation. From modesty or discretion, he would not come really to the this. He had stimulated them to do battle for their emancipation, and for their regeneration he brought forward another friend, who had been born for the task. Business. Owing to Mendelssohn, Wesley became a historical personage, who worked with all his energy for the improvement of the Jews, completing the deficiency of Mendelssohn's retiring character. Hartwig Hartig, Naftali Herz Wesley, born in Hamburg, 1725, died in the same town, 1805, was of a peculiar disposition, combining elements not often associated. His grandfather had established a man of the for arms of Wesley, and had been a commercial counselor and royal resident. His father also conducted an important business, and had frequent intercourse with so-called great people. In this way, Hartwig Wesley came with his father to Copenhagen, where a Portuguese congregation, and also a few German Jews had settled. His early education was the same as that of most 367 boys of that time. He learned to read Hebrew mechanically, and to mistranslate the Bible, to be launched, a boy of nine, into the labyrinth of the Talmud. But a traveling grammarian, Solomon Hano, promoted the development of the germs within him, and inspired him with love for the Hebrew language. His labor was not in vain. Seed sown by Hanoi was to bear thousand fold fruit. Wesley's chief interest was the study of the holy writings in the original tongue. It was the aim of his life to understand them from all points of view. Owing to his father's frequent contact with non Jewish circles, I love in the that course name. of business, you are Wesley obtained an insight into actual life and absorbed other branches of knowledge, the modern languages, geography, history, descriptions of travels. These only served as auxiliary sciences to be employed in the special study of the scriptures, and by their means to penetrate deeper into their thought and spirit. Like Mendelssohn, Wesley was self-taught. Very early he developed taste, a sense for beauty, feeling for purity of speech and form, and repugnance to the mix of dialects and the jargon commonly used among German Jews. Wesley again resembled Mendelssohn in character, distinguished as he was by strict conscientiousness and elevated feelings of honor. In him, too, thoughts, sentiments, words, and deeds showed no discrepancy. He was of deep, pure piety, and unswerving adherent to Judaism. His nature, however, did not display the gentle pliancy of Mendelssohn's. He was stiff and pedantic, more inclined to juggle with words and split hairs than to think deeply, and he had no correct idea of the action of world-moving forces. All his life Wesley remained a visionary, and saw the events of the real world through colored glasses. In one way Wesley was apparently superior to Mendelssohn. He was a poet. In reality, Ouch. however, he only possessed uncommon 368 facility and skill in making beautiful, well-sounding verses of blameless refinement, of graceful symmetrical smoothness, and accurate construction. 
Wesley was greatly charmed by the laws of Emperor Joseph and Come on, guys. Jews, come on, come on, you know you want to. to schools. Step out. He yeah. held there in the dawn of the golden age for the Jews. Whilst Mendelssohn, Good. with his keen perception, somebody take him down. Hey, hey, if, you, hey. he remarks, it is perhaps only a passing if you're gonna get in my way, <laughs> or as some fear, it has a financial purpose. Must Unload on the guy. He's, he's still there. Are you kidding me? What are you guys doing? Joseph. As soon as he was informed that the rigidly orthodox party in Vienna regretted the order to establish schools as an interference with their liberty of conscience, he addressed a Hebrew letter there march. Ori Dami. Called words of peace and truth to the Austrian congregations, exhorting them to welcome <gasps> the government, to rejoice in it. Uh, oh, see, this guy's on his revenge uh, onslaught thing. You are on time. To acquire general culture, that the latter must even proceed in knowledge of religion, and that only by such means could yeah, be removed from the disgrace which, owing to their ignorance, yeah. so, had waited on them for so long. Come on, I'm gonna try to draw his fire. Yeah, and I got him again. Now he got humiliation. His guilt talks. Right. So now, theoretically, he's going to come after me even stronger. Oh! I don't want to die. Okay. What happened? And in a beautiful Hebrew style, could not have failed to produce great effect. Had not Leslie, in his fantastic manner, recommended that all Jewish youths, without distinction of talents and future profession, should be taught not only history and geography 369, but also natural sciences, astronomy, and religious philosophy. Because only by this preliminary knowledge could a thorough understanding of Holy Writ and the Judaism be acquired. This epistle bore him both sweet and bitter fruit. The community of trees, chiefly comprising Italian and Portuguese Jews, who, unlike the Germans, did not consider culture as heresy, had applied to the governor, Count Zinzendorf, declaring their readiness to establish a normal school, and begging him to advise them how they might procure textbooks on religion and ethics. Zinzendorf directed them to a whose celebrated name had penetrated to the distant place. Accordingly, Joseph J. and Galao, in the name of the Congregation of Trees, addressed a petition to the Jewish sage of Berlin for his writings. On this occasion, Mendelssohn called the attention of the people of Trees to his friend Wesley and to his circular letter, recommending the founding of Jewish schools, and the community forthwith entered into negotiations with him. Thus his fervent words met with early encouragement. From the strictly pious people, however, a storm now broke out against him. They were particularly indignant at his hearty approval of Emperor Joseph's reforms. The unenable manner in which princes were willing to concede freedom, the force brought to bear upon the Jews, a natural aversion to forsake the past, the legitimate fear that through school education and partial emancipation young men would be seduced from Judaism, and that the instruction given at the normal schools would supersede the study of the Talmud L. L. These things had induced the rabbis and the representatives Flank. of tradition to Flank. oppose the reforming Jewish ordinances of Emperor Joseph. Besides, men of doubtful piety, such as Hurst Homer, eagerly pressed forward to obtain appointments at the newly founded training schools, 370 and attempt the youthful students to innovations. There were, to be sure, intelligent men, especially in Prague, who greeted the new laws as salutary measures, and hoped that by these means the Jews would rise out of their wretched, demoralized condition. But this minority was denounced by the Orthodox as innovators and triflers. Religious simplicity, which at every puppet one feared the downfall of the edifice of faith, and the desire of gain, which fattened upon ignorance, and the perverse method of instruction in a corrupt dialect, worked hand in hand to predispose the communities against school reforms. Come on. Yeah. Destroyed the you know you want to come on. I always think of Claudia Cream as a girl, but Claudia Cream, I think, was a girl. Further, in his incautious way, he had quoted the Talmudical sentence. A Talmudist who does not possess knowledge general culture is uglier than Congress. This expression greatly angered the Orthodox. The Austrian rabbis dared not attack him openly oh, yeah. because they had only followed the Emperor in his ideas. They appear therefore to have incited certain Polish rabbis to condemn his circular letter and excommunicate him. Although the zealots were without Thank support you. from Berlin, they continued in their heretic hunting, causing the pulpits to re echo with imprecations against Wesley. I know that's and right. Lisa, his letter was publicly burned. He had the bitter experience of standing alone in this conflict. This is a real person. Uh, does he have an art torrent? Hey, don't taste me, bro. Okay, this guy's on. Uh, revenge mode, Claudia Crane. So, chances are Claudia Crane. And Thermonuke is on revenge mode, too. He again dwelt upon the importance of regular instruction and of the abolition 371 of old practices and disproved the charges against him. Gentle and forbearing as he was, he avoided retorting severely upon his opponents. But he permitted words of 
kneel before me. <laughs> Nimrod. I'm with the three MCs that were on the go. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. I'm not gonna nail. Nail. Yeah, his name is Neil. <laughs> Nail before. Keep dreaming, Nimrod. Death called him away in time, before he perceived that his circle, even his own daughters, treated with contemptuous scorn and rejected what his heart held to be most sacred, and what he so earnestly strove to glorify. Had he lived ten years longer, even his wisdom would perhaps not have availed him to tide over this anguish. He who without a trace of romance had led an ideal life, died ideally transfigured, at the right moment. The friendship and the philosophy which had elevated his life and God and fame broke his heart. When Mendelssohn was about to raise a memorial to his unforgotten friend, to 372 show him in his true greatness to future generations, he learned from Jacobi that shortly before his death, Lessing had manifested a decided liking for the philosophy of Spinoza. Lessing a Spinozist. This pierced Mendelssohn's heart as with a spinner. Nothing was so distasteful to him as the pantheistic system of Spinoza, which denied the personal God, providence, and immortality, ideas with which Mendelssohn's soul was bound up. That lesson should have entertained such convictions, and that he, his bosom friend, should know nothing whatsoever about them. Jealousy that Lessing had communicated to others the secret so carefully concealed from himself, and deep disappointment that his friend had not shared his own convictions took possession of Mendelssohn. He suspected that his philosophy, if it was true that Lessing had not been pleased with it, would become obsolete, and be thrust aside. His whole being rose in resistance against such doubts. These thoughts robbed the last years of his life of rest, made him passionate, excited, feverish. While composing his work in reputation of Jacobus, to the friends of Lesson, excitement so overpowered him that it brought on his death January 4th, 1786. This ideal death for friendship and wisdom worthily concluded his life, and showed him to posterity as he appeared to his numerous friends and admirers, an upright, honest man, in whom was neither falsehood nor guile. Almost the entire population of the Prussian capital, and many earnest men in Germany and beyond its borders mourned the man who, 40 years before, with heavy heart had knocked at one of the gates of Bogen, in fear that the Christian or the Jewish beetle would drive it away. The attempt of his Christian friends, Nikolai, Easter, and Engel, I'll pass on the badger. Sandwich. To erect a statue to Mendelssohn 373 in the Opera Square next to those of Leibniz, Lambert, and Sulzer, although it did not meet with approval, characterizes the progress of the time. The deformed son of the so called Stitch versus Plate Desai had become an ornament to the city of Rome. 374. Chapter 9 The New Chastity. The alliance of reason with mysticism's Rehobosham, his career and reputation opened against Rabbinism, he sat here in his rich. Ouch! Ow! The devotional method to the Chisidim air liturgy is a vision of the synods of the four Francis Ossip massacres in Poland, the Jehovah, oh, that was a his character fail. and his little research in his rich and Poland Chisidim are from stints as proof favorable to the spread of the new sect of Rus Persia. Mortar? Is it better than that? Is rich regressive chastity despite the persecution of its opponents? Thought there was somebody there. 1750 to 1786 CE. As soon as an historical work has performed its service, and is to undergo a change, new phenomena arise from various sides, and assume a hostile attitude, either to alter or destroy it. You see that? I, I, I was seeing the hits from the, of the Jewish race, machine gun. Which had when not the, the numbers start jumping up, then pop with the long arm. And it usually connects. And hoped, and strove for it. The old Orthodox party suspected and See that? 13k. The process of dissolution yeah. was brought about also in another way, upon another scene, under entirely different conditions, and by other means, and this could not have been foreseen. There arose in Poland a new ethnism, with forms similar to those of the ancient cult, with evolutions and baths, white garments, miraculous cures, and prophetic visions. Like the old movement, it was ultra piety, but soon turned against its own parent, and perhaps the sandwich. Fifty six thousand development cannot be defined. 
Dang it. Stupid bot. These new bodies took up the hostile position to traditional Judaism and created a rupture. History and its generative powers as manifold and puzzling as nature. It produces in close proximity human earth and poisonous plants, lovely flowers and hideous parasites. Reason and unreason seem to have entered into a coven to shatter the gigantic structure of Talmudic Judaism. The attempt once before made by history to subvert Judaism by the contemporaneous existence of Spinoza and Sabato Zevi was now repeated by the simultaneous attacks Sabato of Zevi. Let's chop that Zevi. Enlightenment and Kabbalistic mysticism joined hands to commence the work of destruction. Mendelssohn and Israel Balshin. What contrasts? Yet both unconsciously undermined the basis <gasps> of Talmud. That, that was an Aries reflex. I'm really, really, that's awful. Numerous, and who sprang up very rapidly yeah. is not so clear as the movement started by Mendelssohn. The new set, a daughter of darkness, was born in gloom. A men of Zephyr, a men of Zephyr, a men of Zephyr. I think you'll get five or seven. The contributed to its rise and propagation are known. The founders of the new Chassidism were Israel of Miji, who was born about 1698. Died 1759, and Beer of Misrich born. Don't you want to come over here and kill me about your sandwich? Died 1772. Taking a control point. The former received, alike from his admirers and his antagonists, the surname of the Wonder Worker by means of invitation in the name of God, or Baal Shem. Defeated by bots. Form, Besht. As ugly as the name, Besht, was the 376 form of the founder and the order that he called into existence. The graces did not sit by his cradle, but the spirit of belief in wonder working, and his brain was so filled with fantastic images that he could not distinguish them from real, tangible beings. The experiences of Israel's youth are unknown. So much, however, is certain. He was left an orphan, poor and neglected, early in life, and passed a great portion of his youth in the forests and caves of the Carpathian Mountains. The spurs of the Carpathian Hills were his teachers. Here he learned what he was not have acquired in the dark, narrow, dirty hovels called schools in Poland aimly, to understand the tongue which nature speaks. The spirits of the mountains and the fountains whispered secrets to him. Here he also learned, probably from the peasant women who gathered herbs on the mountain tops and on the edges of rivers, the use of plants as remedies. As they did not trust to the healing power of nature, but added conjurations and invocations to good and evil spirits, Israel also accustomed himself to this method of cure. He became a miracle doctor. Necessity, too, was his teacher. It taught him to pray. How often, in his forsaken and orphan condition, may he have suffered from want even of dry bread, how often may he have been surrounded by real or imaginary dangers. In his distress he prayed in the usual forms of the synagogue. But he spoke his words with fervor and intense devotion, or cried them aloud in the solitude of the mountains. His audible prayer awakened the echoes of the mountains, which appeared as an answer to his supplications. He seems to have been often in a state of rapture, and to have induced this condition by frantic movements of the whole body while praying. This agitation drove the blood to his head, made his eyes glitter, and brought both body and soul into such a condition of over excitement that he felt three seven seven of deadly weakness come over him. Was this magnetic tension of the soul caused by the motions and the shouting, singing, and praying? Israel Balshin asserted that, in consequence of these bodily agitations and this intense devotion, he often caught a glimpse of infinity. His soul soared upward to the world of light, heard and saw divine secrets and revelations, entered into conversation with sublime spirits, and by their intervention could secure the grace of God and prosperity, and especially avert impending calamities. Please. Israel Miji was also boasted that he could see into the future. As Django and Alex one two three four. Was this a deliberate boast, self-deception, or merely an overestimation of morbid feelings? There are persons, times, and places it's a in which the line of demarcation between trickery and self-delusion cannot be distinguished. In Poland, in Balshin's time, with the terrible mental strain created by the Kabbalah in connection with the Sebastian fraud, the feverish expectation of imminent messianic redemption, everything was possible and everything credible. In that land the fancy of both Jews and Christians moved among extraordinary and supernatural phenomena as in its natural element. Israel steadfastly and firmly believed in the vision seen when he was under mental and physical excitement. He believed in the power of his prayers. In his delusion he blasphemously declared that prayer is a kind of marriage union zivig of man with the Godhead Shekinah, upon which he must enter whilst in a state of excitement. Equipped with alleged higher knowledge of secret remedies and the spirit world, to which he thought he had attained through divine grace, Israel entered the society of men to prove his higher gifts. It must be acknowledged to his credit that he never misused these talents. 
He did not make a trade of them, nor seek to earn his livelihood with them. At first he followed 378 the humble occupation of a wagoner, afterwards he dealt in horses, and when his means permitted it he kept a tavern. Occasionally, when specially requested, he employed his miraculous remedies, and thereby gained so great a well, reputation that he was insulted even How by Polish that? nobles. I think I, I, I he became conspicuous by his noisy, lines. delirious brain, which must have so transfigured him that men did not recognize the wagoner or horse dealer whom they knew. Okay, well, and he I was admired for his revelation of secrets. In Poland, not only the unlearned and the Jews considered such gifts and miracles possible. The Jesuits and the Kabbalists had still to the Christians and the Jews of their country, and plunged them into a state of primitive barbarism. It would have been a remarkable thing if such a wonder doctor, who appeared to have intercourse with the spirit world, had not found adherents, but he can hardly have designed the formation of a new sect. He was joined by persons of a similar disposition to his own, who felt a religious impulse, which could not be satisfied, they thought, by rigorous, penitential lusts, or by mechanical repetition of prescribed prayers. They joined Israel, in Nijibos, to pray with devotion, I, E, in a sing-song tune, clapping their hands, bowing, jumping, gesticulating, and uttering cries. At almost the same time there arose, in Wales, a Christian sect called the Jumpers, who resorted to similar movements during prayer, and induced trances and mesmeric dreams. At the same time there was established, in North America, the sect of the Shakers, by an Irish girl, Johanna Lee, who likewise in the delirium of prayer pursued mystic messianic phantoms. Israel need not have been a trickster to obtain followers. Mysticism and madness are contagious. He particularly attracted men who desire to lead a free and merry life, at the same time hoping to reach a lofty 379 and to live assured of the nearness of God in serenity and calmness, and to advance the messianic future. They did not need to pour over Talmudical folios in order to attain to higher piety. It became the fashion in neo chassidian circles to scoff at the Talmudists. Because the latter mocked at the unmarried chief of the new order, who had a following without belonging to the guild of Talmudists, without having been initiated into the Talmud and its appendages, the Chassidim depreciated the study of the Talmud, avowing that it was not able to promote a truly godly life. Overt war existed between the neo chassidim and the Rabbinites. The latter could not, however, harm their opponents so long as Israel's adherents did not depart from existing Judaism. After the death of the founder, when barbarism and degeneracy increased, the feud grew into a complete rupture under beer of misery. Dov Beer or Birch was no visionary like Israel, but possessed the faculty of clear insight into the condition of men's minds. He was thus able to render the mind and will of others subservient to him. Although he joined the new movement only a short time before Israel's death, yet, whether at his suggestion or not, Israel's son and sons-in-law were passed over, and Beer was made Israel's successor in the leadership of the neo chassidian community. Beer, who transferred the center to Mizrich village in Bohemia as superior to his master in many points. He was well read in Talmudical and Kabbalistic writings, was a fluent preacher magic, who, to further his purpose, could make the most far-fetched biblical verses, as also Adatic and Zohard expressions, harmonize, and thus surprise his audience. He removed from the Chisidim the stigma of ignorance, especially disgraceful in Poland, and secured an accession of supporters. He had a commanding appearance, did not mingle with the people, but lived the whole 380 weeks secluded in a small room and why accessible to his confidence and he does acquire the amount of mysterious um. intercourse with the head Ow! of the Help! Only on the Sabbath See, this guy's on revenge mode. Dead goldfish. I should have watched. On this day, he appeared splendidly attired in sudden, his outer garment, his shoes, and even his Drool. snuff box being white. Yul Brenner, Westworld. Drool. In Kabbalistic language. On this day, in accordance with the custom introduced by Israel Besht, he offered up prayers together with his friends, with the strangers who had made a pilgrimage to him, with the new members, and those curious to see the Kabbalistic saint and wonder of her. To produce the joyous state of mind necessary to devout prayer, we are indulged in vulgar jokes, whereby the merriment of the bystanders was aroused. For instance, he would joke with one of the circle, and throw him down. In the midst of this child's play, he would suddenly cry out, Now serve the Lord with madness. Under the guidance, the constitution of Chantism remained apparently in the same form as under his predecessor, Fergot, convulsive praying, inspiration had landed, miraculous cures, and revelations of the future. But as these actions did not, as with Israel, flow from a peculiar or abnormal state of mind, they could only be imitated with the slow illusion had to supply what nature withheld. Don't you want to kill me? It was an accepted Come on. fact that the Chassidian leader, or Zedek, Focus a perfectly pious man, had to be enthusiastic in prayer, had to have ecstatic dreams and visions. How can a clever father of fear inspire? Alcohol, See, so he's much trying to come. Poland, now had to take the place of the inspiring demon. 
appear to have the knowledge of a medial earth, which his teacher had obtained in the Carpathian Mountains. He, therefore, devoted himself to medicine, and if his remedies did not avail, then the sick person died of his sinfulness. To predict the future was a more 381 difficult task, yet True it had to be accomplished. Truly wine. His reputation as a thaumaturgist depended upon it. Fear was equal to the emergency. Oh. You know you Among want to. Intimates were experts you know you want to. Worthy of serving in the secret police. They discovered Took my shell down. And Dang. told okay. them to their okay. leader. Thus he was unable to assume an appearance of omniscience. <sighs> or his emissaries committed robberies. If the victims came to this the guy's not even here. to find them out, he was able to indicate the exact spot where the missing articles were lying. The strangers, attracted by Shouldn't the have for God's sake. Him, they were not admitted, as bond. mentioned, until the following Saturday. To take part in the Chassidian Witch's Sabbath. Meantime, his spies, by artful questions and other means, gleaned a knowledge of the affairs and secret desires of these strangers and communicated them to the Zedic. Now, what I don't know. In the first interview here, in maybe a it doesn't casual matter, I mean, it's a bot. In a bot memory. Discourse, to bring in allusions to these strangers, whereby they would be convinced that he had looked into their hearts and knew their past. See, the, what well, I'm curious about is the bot, if the bot, uh, the after the round, is the bot uh, still the number of his followers. Murph and Every new this guy, what happened? He's on the toilet. And induced Taking others to join. In order to strengthen respect for him, Beer propounded a theory, which in its logical application is calculated to promote most harmful consequences. Supported by the Kabbalistic formula, that the righteous or the pious man is the foundation of the world, he magnified the importance of the Zadik, or the chastity of sheep, to such an extent that it became blasphemy. A Zadik is not alone the most perfect and sinless human being, he is not alone Moses, but the representative of God and his image. All and everything that the Zadik does and thinks has a decided influence upon the 382 upper and lower worlds. Yeah, I think the that Goldfish does remember. Even his most trifling deeds are from, considered important. From the round. The way he wears his clothes, Dummy. ties his shoes, Stupid. and smokes his pipe, whether he delivers from ground or very blessings, or indulges in silly jokes, everything bears a close relation to the deity, and is of as much moment as the fulfillment of a religious duty. Even when drawing inspiration from the bottle, Here comes he is far in upper and nether worlds. All these absurd fancies owed their origin to the superstitious doctrines of Back the Back away, stand recover, let, it, let him take as many hits as possible. In, Frank, in spite of the opposition which their chief exponent, Azor, had encountered at about this time at the hands of Jacob Anden, still clouded the brains of the foolish Jews. According to this theory, the Zadig, I, E, Burish Mizrich, was the embodiment of power and splendor upon Earth. In his street L, or Hermitage, I, E, in his dirty little retired chamber, he considered himself as great as the people liquor of God upon earth in his magnificent palace. His attic was also to bear himself proudly towards men. All this was for the glory of God. It was a sort of Catholicism within Judaism. Beer's idea, however, was not meant to remain idle and fruitful, but to bring him honor and revenue. While the Zadik cared for the conduct of the world, for the obtaining of heavenly grace, and especially for Israel's preservation and glorification, his adherents had to cultivate three kinds of virtues. It was their duty to draw an eye to him, to enjoy Stretch the sight of fingers. him, and from time oh. to time to make pilgrimages to him. Further, they were to confess their sins to him. By these means alone could they hope for pardon of their iniquities. Finally, they had to bring him presents, rich gifts, which he knew how to employ to the best advantage 383 it was also incumbent upon them to attend to his personal wants. It seems like a return to the days of the priests of Baal, so vulgar and disgusting do these perversities appear. The saddest part of all is that this teaching, worthy of a fetish-worshipping people, met with approbation in Poland, the country distinguished by cumbersome knowledge of Jewish literature. It was just this excess, this overactivity of the spiritual digestive apparatus, that produced such lamentable phenomena. The intellect of the Polish That's an incendiary sight, statement for some, I think. more pleasing to them than what was refined. Beer dispatched abroad as his apostles bombastic preachers is it true? his teachings with distorted citations from the scriptures. Simple-minded men, rogues, and idlers, of whom there were so many in Poland, attached themselves to the new Chistin. The first came information to enthusiasm and belief in miracles. The claim, in order to procure money in an easy way, and leave a pleasant existence. And the idlers, because in the courts of the Zadik they found occupation, and gratified their curiosity. If such idlers were asked what they were thinking of, as they strolled about pipe and mouth, they would reply with seriousness, we are meditating upon God. The simple people, however, who hope to win bliss through the chastity and discipline, engaged continually in prayer, until through exhaustion they dropped unconscious. Neo-chastitism was favored by two circumstances, the 
fraternization of the members and the dryness and fossilized character of Talmudic study has carried on in Poland for more than a century. At the outset the Chisid formed a kind of brotherhood, not indeed with the common curse, as among their prototypes, the Essenes and the Jud Christians, but having regard to the wants of needy members. Owing to the closeness of their unit, 384 their spine system, and their energy, it was easy for them to provide for those who lacked employment or food. On New Year and the Day of Atonement people, even those who dwelt at long distances, undertook pilgrimages to the Zero, as formerly to the temple, and left their wives and children to pass the so-called holy days in the company of their chief, to be edified by his presence and actions. Here the Chasidian disciples learned to know one another, discussed local affairs, and rendered mutual help. Well-to-do merchants found opportunity at these assemblies, in conversation with fellow believers, upon whose fidelity and brotherly attachment they Ouch. could rely, to discover fresh sources of income. The fathers of marriageable daughters sought and easily found husbands for them, which at that time in Poland was considered a highly important matter. The common meals on the afternoons of Saturdays and the holidays strengthened the bonds of loyalty and affection among them. Was that guy? Ah. How could meals for so many guests be provided? The wealthy chisid and regarded it as a duty to support the Zadik liberally. A special source of income was the superstitious belief prevalent among the Chisid and the Zadik for certain sums could end. Redemption could ward off threatening perils and cure deadly diseases. Pressure was brought to bear upon wealthy but weak-minded persons, and they were terrified into believing that they could escape impending calamities only by rich gifts. Whoever desired to enter upon a hazardous transaction consulted the Zadik as an oracle, and had to pay for his counsel. The cunning Chisid knew everything, were ready with counsel in any emergency, and by their craftiness were able to afford real assistance. The Zadik, however miserly he might be, had to assist the poor and distress with his revenues. Thus every member received help here. Full of enthusiasm 385 they returned home from their journey. The feeling that they belonged to a brotherhood elevated them, and they ardently looked forward to the return of the holy time. The poor and forsaken, the fanatical and the unprincipled, could not do better than join this union, this easy-going yet religious order. Earnest men, also, desirous of satisfying their spiritual wants, felt themselves attracted to the Chisidim. Rabbinical Judaism, as known in Poland, offered no sort of religious comfort. Its representatives placed the highest value upon the dialectic, artificial exposition of the Talmud and of commentary. Hey, Shumper, you know, what are you doing, Actual stupid bot? Had besides caused a portion of the Talmud which treated of oh, he was waiting for a reward. Thank you. Who's that? Vintage God. He's a bot. Fine spun decisions of new, complicated legal points occupy the doctors of the Talmud day and night. Moreover, this hair splitting was considered so this piety and superseded everything else. If anyone solved an intricate Talmud question, Thank you. discovered something new, called Torah, he felt self-satisfied, <sighs> and assured of his felicity hereafter. All other objects, the impulse to devotion, prayer, and emotion, or interest in the moral condition of the community, were secondary matters, to which scarcely any attention was paid. The mental exercise of making logical deductions from the Talmud, or more correctly, Relax your hands, kids. Showed all other intellectual pursuits in Poland. <sighs> Religious ceremonies Stretch. Are both amongst Talmudists and the unlearned, into meaningless usages, and prayer into mere lip service. Like, I, I'd stem my fingers like this, it feels so good, just stretch them as far as you can stretch them. And the dogmatism and pride of the rabbis arising from it were repellent, uh, and, and they flung themselves go, into the arms so of the new order, which allowed so much uh, play for three eighties of Don't clench up your hands in the first place. Especially preachers. Which I, I'm doing, and I'm trying to learn Rabbi not to. As inferior and contemptible, who eat out a wretched living, or almost starved, read themselves with the neo chisidim because among them their talents of preaching were appreciated, and they could obtain an honorable position, and be secured against need. By the accession of such elements, the circle of neo chisidim became daily augmented. Almost in every town lived followers of the new school, who occasionally had intercourse with their brother members and their chief. With advancing strength, the antipathy of the neo chisid into the rabbis and Talmudists increased. Without being aware of it, they formed a new sect, which spread intercourse with the Talmud Jews. With fear at their head, they felt themselves strong enough to introduce an innovation, which would naturally bring down the anger of the rabbis upon them. Since prayer and the rites of divine service were the chief consideration for them, they did not trouble themselves about the prescriptions of the ritual law as to how many prayers should be said, nor at what time the different services should commence and terminate, but were entirely guided by the feeling of the moment. Through their daily ablutions, baths, and other preparations for public worship, they were seldom ready for prayer at the prescribed time, but began later, surrounded by the movements of their bodies and their intent, and suddenly came to an end after omitting several portions. They were especially averse to the harsh interpolations in the Sabbath and festival prayers the PUT. These insertions interrupt the most important and suggestive portions of the service. 
to abolish these at a blow, the Armizrich introduced the prayer book of the arch capitalist, Isaac Maria, which in 387 greater part conforms to the Portuguese ritual, and does not contain political Catanic editions. In the eyes of the ultra-orthodox this innovation was an enormous, or rather a double crime, permitting, as it did, the omission of interpolations hallowed by custom, and the exchange of the German ritual for the Sephardic. This innovation would probably have been severely visited upon the neo chistidim but that at this time, when the political power of Poland lay crushed, the firm political connection of the Polish Jews had also been dissolved. Poland was distracted by a civil war. In this country, as the primate of Nessen complained at the opening of the Reichstag, March, 1764, freedom is oppressed, the laws are not obeyed, justice cannot be obtained, trade is utterly ruined, districts and villages are devastated, the treasury is empty, and the coin of the realm has no value. It had been enabled by the Jesuits, and was already regarded by Russia as a sure prey. Its king Tanislaus Augustus King Kofsky as a weakling, the plaything of internal factions and the mouse on September. Sometimes I, I click in it, this doesn't fire. I don't know if it's the game doing that. I'm concerned is this Chinese uh, O and mouse. Composed of delegates, rabbis and main incarnacy, with authority to pronounce interdicts and levy lines, was not permitted to assemble, pass resolutions, or execute them. The dissolution of the synod was very fortunate for the neo chistidim They could sure. not be excommunicated by the representatives of the Polish Jewish world, but each individual congregation had to proceed against them and forbid their meetings. Even this step was not taken at once, as the terrible death struggle in which Poland engaged before its first partition was severely felt by the wealthy Jews, who trembled for their lives. The Confederation 388 war broke out, which made many districts a desert. Poland was punished by eternal justice in the same way as it had sinned. In the name of the Pope and the Jesuits, it had always persecuted dissenters, and excluded them from public offices, and, Cut. in the name of the dissenters, Catherine plunged the land into fratricidal war. The Russians, for the second time, let loose against Poland the Zaporozhian Cossacks. He savaged Kardamus home inflicted death, by every known method, upon the Polish nobles, the clergy, and the Jews. The Kardamus hung up to okay, the other nobles, a Jew, a monk, and a dog, with a mocking oh, inscription, shoot. all are equal. Reaction time. Most inhuman cruelties were inflicted upon captives and the defenseless. In addition came the Turks, who, in the guise of saviors of Poland, murdered and plundered on every side. The Ukraine, Podolia, in general the southern provinces of Poland, were turned into deserts. These misfortunes were more advantageous than injurious to the neo chistidim They spread in the north, and whilst hitherto they had been able to carry on their cult only in small, comparatively young communities, from this time they gained ground in the large and old congregations. Their numbers had already grown to such an extent that they formed two branches in the region and the Carmenians he former called after their original home, the latter after the village of Karin, near Pins. The Carmenians spread as far as Ronan Brody. At first, they proceeded cautiously. As soon as at least Shit. 10 persons had assembled, they looked for a room street hell in which to conduct their services. There they practiced the rites of their creed, and sought to gain new adherence. But all this was skillfully done, so that nothing came to light before they had secured a firm hold. In Lithuania their system was not yet known, and thus at first they aroused no suspicion. Good job, y'all. Huh, the on. first violent attack upon them was made by a man whose influence was blessed during his life, <sighs> and even after death, and who, in a more favorable environment, might, mm. like men, have affected much for the moral advancement of his co-religionists. Elijah Wilhelm had born 1720, died 1797, <laughs> with the title of Guillaume, is still mentioned by the Lithuanian Jews with reverence and love, was a rare exception among the mass of the Polish Jews. He was of the purest character, and possessed high talents, which he did not put to perverted uses. It suffices to say of his character that in spite of his comprehensive and profound Talmudical erudition, he refused a post as rabbi, in contrast to most scholars in Poland, who were office seekers, and attained rabbinus by artifice. In spite of the marvelous fertility of his pen in many domains of Jewish literature, he allowed nothing to be published during his lifetime, again in contradistinction to contemporary students, who, in order to make a name and to see their ideas in print, scarcely waited till the ink of their compositions was dry. In his disinterestedness, Elijah Luna realized the ideal of the Talmud, that a teacher of Judaism should use the law neither as a crown to adorn himself therewith, nor as a skill to deal with it. In spite of the superiority of his knowledge and the full and general recognition accorded him, he modestly and conscientiously avoided asserting himself. The gratification of results from research, from the seeking of knowledge, completely satisfied him. Good. Yellow hat, man. That was an example of a bot coming at you for revenge. As a back away. Course, the Talmud and all the branches connected with are dependent on it filled his mind. 
but he disliked the corrupt method of his countrymen, who indulged in hair splitting, fabulously, and subtleties. His sole aim was to penetrate to the simple sense of the text. 390B even made an attempt at a careful examination and inundation of texts, and by his undistorted explanations he blew down the houses of cards which the subtle Talmudists had erected upon quicksand. It required extraordinary mental force to swim against the high tide of custom and rise above the aberrations into which all the sons of the Talmud and Poland had fallen. In point of fact, Elijah Wilma stood isolated in his time. It seemed as though from his youth he was afraid of following the errors of his contemporaries, for he attached himself wow. to a special school. But, strange to 18. say, was his own teacher in the Talmud. Wow. Talmudical studies did not exclusively occupy his mind. Elijah Wilma devoted great attention to the Bible rarity in his circle and even, what was still more unusual, he acquainted himself with the grammar of the Hebrew language. Unlike his compatriots, he by no means despised a knowledge of extra Talmudic subjects, but studied mathematics, and wrote a book upon geometry, algebra, and mathematical astronomy. He exhorted his disciples and friends to interest themselves in profane sciences, and openly expressed his conviction that Judaism would be the gainer from such studies. Only his scrupulous piety, his immaculate conduct, his unselfishness, and his renunciation of every office and position of honor, saved him from the charge of heresy on account of his pursuing extra Talmudical branches of knowledge. Elijah Wilma, above all, implanted a good spirit in the Lithuanian Jews. He taught his sons and disciples to seek simplicity and avoid the casuistry of the Polish method. In Elijah Wilma the beautiful Talmudical saying was exemplified, he who flees from honors is sought out by them. At an early age he was recognized, even outside of Poland, as an authority and a man of truth. Yet even Elijah was subject to the delusion that the papal 391 Kabbalah was a true daughter of Judaism, and contained true elements. He deeply lamented the moral ruin wrought by the Kabbalah among Podolian and Galician Jews, through the rascally Frank, who had driven them into the arms of the church, and made them enemies to the synagogue. Yet he could not free himself from it. Even when the anger of these false doctrines was brought home to him by the rise of the Chistidim, and he was compelled openly to oppose them, he could not relinquish his blind fondness for the Kabbalah. The neo chistidim or Carmenians, had crept into Wilna, and had established a secret street hell for their noisy conventicles. A trusty friend of their leader, and an emissary sent by him, had stealthily introduced their cult into the town, and won over several members of the Wilna community. Their meetings, their proceedings, and their derision of the Talmudists, were betrayed. The whole congregation were greatly excited at this. They were indignant that the Carmenians impotently asserted of the respected Elijah Luna, that, like his occupation and his beauty, his life was a lie. The elders and rabbis forthwith took counsel. The Chisidic conventicles were straightway attacked, investigations set on foot, and trials instituted. Writings were found among the Chisidim, which contained the principle that all sadness was to be avoided, even in the repentance for sins. But greatest uneasiness was aroused by the alterations in the liturgy and the disrespectful utterances against the rabbis. Elijah Luna, who, although he filled no official position, was always invited to the council meetings, and had an important voice in its decisions, took a very serious view of the matter. He beheld in the church of aberration a continuation of time sepsis and corrupting influence. Shoot! The otherwise gentle and meek man became a veritable fanatic. The rabbi and the chiefs of the community, 392 together with Elijah Luna, wrote a letter to all the large communities, directing them to keep a sharp eye on the city. That was a fragment gun promo promotional spot. Several that could be a guard. Immediately obeyed this injunction. In Brody, during the fair, in the presence of many strangers, the ban was published against all those who prayed noisily, deviated from the German synagogue ritual, wore white robes on Sabbath and the festivals, and were guilty of other strange customs and innovations. Elijah Wilma's circle launched a vigorous demonstratory pamphlet against the offenders. This was the first blow that the Chisidim experienced. In addition, their leader, Ir Mizrich, died in the same year 1772 the rabbis imagined in consequence of the excommunication and he thus they felt themselves utterly deserted, owing to the weakness of the king, and the greed of the neighboring nations, the kingdom of Poland was dismembered. Through this disorganization the union of the Chisidim was broken, and the separated members became dependent upon the legislature, or the arbitrary treatment, of various governments. However, this storm did not crush them. They remained firm, and did not display the slightest sign of submitting to their opponents Nick 19. On the contrary, the struggle made them more active and energetic. They were not deeply moved by the ban under which they had been placed. This weapon, once it's in the contest framed against Jonathan Idesh Z, could no longer inflict wounds. 
electricity grown to the number of 50 or 60,000, form themselves into small groups, each with a leader, called Reba. Their itinerant preachers encourage the individual communities to persevere in their tenets, and to accept persecution as a salutary trial. The connection of the groups with one another was maintained 393 inches this way. A chief from the family of the Elizabeth was placed at the head as the supreme zadok, to whom the various Reba were subordinate, and for whose use they were to set aside a portion of their income. The possible apostasy of members through the onslaughts from Bruno was met by the order that the Chisida might leave no work that had not received the approval of the Chisida authorities. Obedience towards their leaders had taken so deep a root in the minds of the Chisida that they never transgressed this prohibition. Their chiefs distributed among them the sermons or collections of sayings supposed to have been written by Israel Gosha, or Bruno's which emphasized the high importance of the Zadig, of the Chisida life, and of scorn for the Talmudist style writings, which were nevertheless greeted with admiration by the members, who were kept in a constant state of intoxication. What had hitherto been optional and individual was raised by these writings to the rank of statutes and stringent laws. After Beer's death, two men chiefly contributed to the exaltation of chastitism, one through his unbounded enthusiasm, the other by his scholarship. These men, neither of whom is open to suspicion, were Israel of Kozi and Izanel of Rabin and Salmon of Riyadi, both Beer's disciples. So strong did the Chisidim again become, that a second interdict had to be fulminated against them. This time also the persecution originated in Luna, and was instituted by Elijah Luna. The Chisidim were declared to be heretics, with whom no pious Jew might intermarry summer of 1781. Two messengers were sent from Wilna to the Lithuanian congregations to induce them to support the ban. In consequence of this, the collections of Chasidic sermons and other writings, although they contain sentences from Holy Writ, were publicly burnt in Brody and Kato. In Selvia, near 394 Stam, during the fair, in the presence of large numbers of Thank Jews, you. the ban was publicly promulgated against the Chasidim and their writings August 21, 1781. But these odds and methods were of little use. In the Austrian Polish provinces, Galicia, other means were employed by the disciples of Mendelssohn School against the Celtifying system of the Chasidim. The decree of Joseph II, that schools for instruction in German and elementary subjects be established in all Jewish communities, encountered vigorous Did he just take that Jews, shell? But especially he run in front of me and get the shell that the guy was aiming at me? The demoralized and I think he did. People, a small body of Thank men, you. Mendelssohn's admirers, strove zealously to oppose them. Among the most ardent workers for the enlightenment of the Galician Jews was Alexander Keller. So reaction time. Keller and his associates probably obtained a decree from the court at Vienna, commanding that no Chasidic or Kabbalistic writings be admitted into Galicia 1785. After the second partition of Poland, the denunciations were also leveled against the Chasidim in Russian Poland as dangerous to the state. Salmon of Riyadi was dragged in chains to St. Petersburg. Elijah Luna is said to have been the instigator of this charge, too. Indeed. He persecuted the sect as long as he lived. I want to After kill his death, it took vengeance upon him by dancing upon his grave uh. and celebrating the day of his deceased as a holiday, with shouting and drunkenness. And I mean that in the sense of that's what I'm lacking. The right were in vain because, in a measure, they represented a just principle that of opposing the excesses of Talmudism. Good. Before the end of the 18th century, they had increased to 100,000 souls. At the present day, they rule in congregations where they were formerly persecuted, and they are spreading on all sides. 395. Chapter 10 Mieskin and the JUD Christian Salon. The progressionists he gather a Mieskin avid main disposes in China Sleeves Mosaic Arcus Herzalom and main altar of the Berlin Jews and Kings of French literature. First step of raising the Jews he progressive and orthodox parties he Society of Friends Redelder and Conversion the Pravity of Berlin Jews is Henrietta Herzumbrot or a Thea Mendes and Clegg Alashal Kliam of Berlin. 1786 to 1791 CE. The state of the German Jews, among whom the battle against unreason began, was more satisfactory than that of the Polish Jews. In Germany youthful activity and energy asserted themselves, an impulse to action that promised to repair in a short space of time the neglect of centuries. Great enthusiasm suddenly sprang up, which produced wonderful, or at least surprising, results, and overcame the benumbing effects of apathy. Young men tore the scepter from the grasp of the aged, and desired to preach new wisdom, or rather to rejuvenate the old organism of Come on, the new sap. The synagogue might well have explained, who have begotten me these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro? And who hath brought up these? A new spirit had come upon these youths, which, in one night, put an end to their isolation, and transformed them into organs for historical reconstruction. As if by agreement, they suddenly closed the ponderous folios of the Talmud, turned away from it, and devoted themselves to the Bible, the eternal fount of youth. Mendelssohn's Pentateuch translation poured out a new spirit over them, furnished 396 them with a new language, okay, and infused new poetry into them. 
whence this body of spirited young men? What had hitherto been their course of education? Why were they so powerfully influenced? Suddenly they made their appearance, prophesied a new future, without knowing exactly what they prophesied, and, scarce fledged, soared aloft. From Poland to Alsace, from Italy to Amsterdam, London, and Copenhagen, new voices were heard, singing in harmonious union. Their significance lay wholly in their harmony. Singly, the voices appear thin, piping, and untrained. Only when united do they give forth a pleasant and impressive tone. Those who had but recently learned to appreciate the beauties of Hebrew, came forward as teachers, to re-establish in its purity a language, so greatly disfigured, so generally used, and so continually abused. Inspired by ideals which the Sage of Berlin had conjured up, they desired to pave the way to a thorough understanding of Holy Writ, to acquire a taste for poetry, and awaken zeal for science. Carried away by ardor, they ignored the difficulties in the way of a people, internally and externally enslaved, which seeks to raise itself to the heights of poetry and philosophy, and therefore they succeeded in accomplishing the revival. On the whole they achieved more than Mendelssohn, their admired prototype, because the latter was too cautious to take a step that might have an unaward result. But these youths pressed boldly forward, for they had no reputation to lose, and represented no interests that could be compromised. This result was produced by a material and an ideal circumstance. Frederick's eagerness for money, his desire to enrich the land, almost compelled the Jews, especially those of Berlin, to accumulate capital. Owing to their inadequate risk, speculations, and enormous enterprises on the one hand, okay, and their modern manner of living on the 397 mother, the first Jewish millionaires arose in Berlin, and by their side many houses in affluent circumstances. But what could be done with these riches? To the nobility and the court, Jews were not admitted. The Philistine burghers closed their doors against these Jewish upstarts, whom they regarded with envy. There thus remained for wealthy Jews only literary intercourse, for which they have always had a preference. All or the majority had in their Made this thing two versus the two death matches. with the world of books. This circumstance Let me try something though, huh? an ideal character. They did not worship mammon alone. Reading in their leisure hours was a necessity to them. As soon as German literature had been naturalized in their midst through Mendelssohn, they included it in their circle of studies, either with the serious object of cultivating themselves or to be in accord with fashion. In this matter they excelled the Christian citizens, who as a rule did not care for books. Jewish merchants, manufacturers, and bankers interested themselves in literary productions, as if they belonged to a guild of burned men, using for them the time that Christian citizens and workmen passed in drinking. The first movement was made in Königsberg, a kind of colony to Berlin. In this town certain men had acquired wealth by their industry and circumspection, and shared in the culture dawning in Germany under the influence of French literature. Three brothers named Friedel der Mann, Meyer, and Wolf were the leaders. To this family belonged David Friedel der born 1750, died 1834, a servile imitator of Mendelssohn, who by means of his connection by marriage with the banking house of Daniel Itzig, obtained influence in Berlin since 1771, and brought about close intercourse between Berlin and Königsberg. He also took part in the promotion of the revival among Jews. It was a 398 event in the history of the Kingsburg Jews, when Mendelssohn stayed there for several days while on a business journey. He was visited by distinguished persons, professors and authors, and was treated with extraordinary attention. Immanuel Kant, the profound thinker, publicly embraced him. This trifling occurrence gave to the culture Jews of Kingsburg a sort of consciousness that the Jew can by self-respect command the regard of the ruling classes. Moreover, the Kingsburg University, at the instigation of certain liberal-minded teachers, especially Kant, admitted Jewish youths thirsting for knowledge as students and academical citizens. Among these young men, trained partly on Talmudical, partly on academical lines, there were two who awakened a new spirit, or rather, continued the quiet activity of Mendelssohn with greater effect. These were Isaac Abraham Mikkel and Mendel Breslau, both tutors employed by the wealthy, culture-loving Friedel Durs. Isaac Eupel, through Mendelssohn and Wesley, had acquired a dignified, correct Hebrew style contrasting most favorably with the corrupt language hitherto employed. His younger companion, Mendel Breslau, who afterwards took part in the great contest against the old school, was of more importance. He was truly an artist in the Hebrew tongue, and without elaboration or ambiguity he applied biblical phraseology to modern conditions and circumstances. He took as his model the poet Moses Chaim Luzado, and like him composed a moral drama, entitled Youth. Supported by two young members of the wealthy Friedel Dorf family, Eupel and Breslau, during the lifetime of Mendelssohn, and at the time of Wesley's conflict with the ultra-Orthodox Spring, 1783, issued a summons to the whole Jewish world to establish a society for the promotion of the Hebrew language Chedeth Dorsch Leschenever, and to found a journal to be 399 called the Gadmer Misif. 
they had reckoned upon the support of Leslie, already recognized as an authority upon style, and had asked contributions from him, who, as they expressed themselves, had taken down the harps from the willows of Babylon, and had drawn forth new songs from them. The aged poet gladly joined the young men, but, as if he had had a foreboding of the ultimate result, he warned them against turning their darts against Judaism, and in general against employing satire. Their summons found widespread response. They had chosen the right means to advance culture, and they satisfied a real want. The Hebrew language in its purity and chastity could alone accomplish the union between Judaism and the culture of the day. The gatherer found most encouragement in Berlin, the capital of Jewish culture. Here numerous literary contributions and material support were forthcoming. In the city lived a number of youths moved by the same aspirations as Ephel and Breslau, who fostered enthusiasm for the Hebrew language, and renewed its youth. Not too proud to enter into rivalry with beginners, Mendelssohn also contributed a few Hebrew poems anonymously. It is characteristic of the newly aroused spirit, that the fine introductory Hebrew verses in the periodical are represented as being written by a young child who modestly begs admittance, as if henceforth, not the grey-headed Eliphaz, but the youthful Elohim who was to be spokesman, and laid down the law. Fresh names appeared in the newly established organ, and their owners, under the collective name of Mieskman, contributors to the Gatherer Music, first published in the autumn of 1783, mark a definite tendency, a sperm on drain period of mere Hebraic literature. Another pair of friends of Eupel and Breslau afterwards undertook the 400 editorship. These were Joel Ellie and Aaron Howe, or Wolfson he won and Ernest and the other a bold icon trust, who first verified Leslie's fears, and, in a dialogue between Moses Maimonides and Moses Mendelssohn, subjected unprogressive Judaism to scathing criticism. Two Poles residing in Berlin, Isaac Satino and Ben Zeep, most accomplished masters of Hebrew style, also belonged to the Miesmann, but their studies in German culture had an injurious effect upon their moral character. Besides, a small number of contributors to the gatherer was swelled by Wolf Heidenheim, a strange man, who equally abhorred the crudeness and folly of the old system, and the frivolity and sophistry of the new, and banished his ill humor by pedantically exact grammatical and Masoretic studies on the lines of the old masters. By his carefully arranged editions of old writings, if he did not destroy, he at least curbed, the old habits of slovenliness and carelessness. The cultivators of Hebrew stretched out friendly hands to each other across widely sundered districts, and formed a kind of brotherhood which spread to Holland, France, and Italy. What's he got? David hey. was also yeah. an enthusiast for the Hebrew language and biblical literature. Mm. He possessed such delicate appreciation of the beauties of the language, that no chosen Hebrew word caused him harm. He constantly insisted upon pure forms and expressions, and was a cultivated and severe judge. In his youth, Friedrich Spitz had chosen the better fate, by turning his back upon Prussia, so cruel to the Jews, and emigrating to the free city of Amsterdam. He heartily welcomed, with youthful ardor, the plan for the study of Hebrew, and lived to enjoy the good fortune of celebrating and he reversed the complete emancipation of the Jews in Holland. At this proposition, the Jewish poets in Holland joined 401 the race of the Miesmann. The most renowned was David Franco Mendes in Amsterdam born 1713, died 1792. He was descended from a Murano family, was a disciple of the poet Luzado when the latter lived in Amsterdam, and took him as a pattern. A series of occasional poems, in the form of the Jet Spanish poetry of the 17th century, had gained him a name which was increased by his Hebrew historical drama, The Punishment of Athalia Gemma Athalia. It distressed Franco Mendes to see how the Jews turned away from Hebrew to the fashionable French literature, because the latter produced beautiful, artistic works, whilst the Hebrew language seemed smitten with sterility. This disgrace Mendes desired to blot out, and, following in the wake of Racine and Metastasio, he undertook to dramatize the interesting history of the royal boy Josh who, to be protected from murderous hands, was brought up secretly in the temple, and of the downfall of the bloodthirsty queen Athalia. In France, the Hebrew literature of the Miesmann was represented by Moses in Shine Einstein, or Moses Metz, who for several years was private tutor to Mendelssohn's children. He was a mathematician of great repute, whose work has been based on qualified authorities of the first rank. Thus he wrote a work upon integral and differential calculus, which won the applause of Lagrange and Laplace. But he never published any of his writings. He only gave voice to triumphal songs in Hebrew upon the victory of the mother slavery in France, and some of these were sung in the synagogue. And Shine influenced an advocate reporter of the liberation of his co-religious and provided him with material wherewith to defend them. And Shine formed a contrast to an older teacher in Mendelssohn's house, Herz Homburg, a great favorite with Mendelssohn. The 402 ladder was deceived in him, and trusted in him too far when he invited his cooperation in the Pentateuch translation. Homburg was of a prosaic nature, actuated wholly by selfish motives, and was somewhat of a place hunter. 
Peter Plumber, during his stay in GZ, and Elijah Mopurko, who corresponded with Mendelssohn and Wesley, the educational influence of the Mies been penetrated to Italy. And the younger generation, which afterwards united with the French Jews, drew inspiration from that source. In this manner, the Hebrew language and neo hebraic poetry became a bond of union for the Jews of Western Europe, to some extent embracing also the Jews of Poland, and led the way to an astonishingly swift and enduring revival. The Hebrew tongue was known to almost all Jews, with the exception of a few ignorant villagers, and afforded an excellent medium for propagating European culture. Thousands of youths who studied the Talmud in various colleges, gradually, for the greater part secretly, took an active share in the movement, and drank deep drafts from the stream of innovation. Thus, with the expected deliverance from political oppression, which had already been realized in various places, there I'm was like, a uh... clear excitement and confusion. The old and the new mingled, forming a kind of a spiritual hotspot. The question was raised whether or not, beside the Talmud, it was allowed to engage in biblical studies and profane literature, to cultivate philosophy, and in general to study the sciences chakra. The great rabbis, Ezekiel Landau, Raphael Cohen, and others, condemned such studies, whilst Mendelssohn and Wesley, blamelessly pious men, not only permitted, but even recommended them for the elevation of Judaism. Of the old and respected authorities, some permitted them and even occupied themselves therewith, whilst others prohibited and held a Leo 403 from them, as from some seductive sin. These important questions presented themselves to thinking Jewish young men, and gave rise to much disquietude. For the greater number the charm of novelty, the attractive language of the representatives of the new tendency, or the inclination to cast off burdensome ritual fetters decided the question. The number of those interested in the periodical, the gatherer, increased from year to year. The death of Mendelssohn also exerted a decided influence. His pupils as such, all the Mies who regarded themselves eyified him, glorified him in bright colors, idealized him at his no, event history in prose and verse, pointed him out as an ideal worthy of imitation, and turned his renown to advantage in their cause. They went a step further, or widened the extent of their activity, aiming not merely at enabling the Hebrew language, but at refinement in general. They called themselves the Society for the Good and the Noble from 1787, without being able to define their purpose. The all-powerful stream of innovation could not be stemmed by the adherence of the old school. Unskillfully they attempted to vindicate the old system, exaggerating the dangers, and thereby losing all influence. Thus in almost every large community, there arose a party of the enlightened or the left, which had not yet broken from the old school, but whose action bordered upon secession. By the ultra-orthodox they were denounced as heretics, on account of their preference for pure language and form, both in Hebrew and European literature. This abusive name hurt them but little, and rather afforded them a certain amount of satisfaction. The outcome of the work of the Mieskin was that they stirred men's minds, extending their range of observation, and leading them to enabling thoughts and acts. Let's see if anybody can withstand But these writers did not leave any for for permanent results. Not a single production of the circle has enduring value. But their best performance was Wesley's swan song, which possesses literary, if not artistic work. Roused perhaps by the astonishment of Herder, the admirer of ancient Hebrew poetry, that no poet had celebrated the miracles of the departure from Egypt whose center was the sublime prophet Moses as we determined to compose a neo hebraic yeah. epic. Animated by the spirit of the pop. prophets, their port was smooth, smooth, well-rounded, cool. oiphonious verses, which unrolled before the eye the grand events that occurred from the cruel bondage in Egypt till the miraculous passage of the Red Sea and the wanderings in the wilderness. Songs of glory Wesley called his Hebrew heroic poem, his mosaic. In fact, his verses and strophes are beautifully arranged and perfect in form. It is the best work that the school of the Mieskin produced. Wesley's epic was so much admired that two Christian poets, Huck Middle and Spalding, rendered the first two cantos into German. The Mosaic is, however, by no means a masterpiece. It lacks the breadth of true poetry, fancy and loftiness of conception. It is merely a history of the origin of the Israelites transcribed into verse, or, more correctly, a versified commentary on the Pentateuch. This criticism holds of the school as a whole. Its disciples were good neo hebraic stylists, but as poets their ability was not even mediocre. The appearance of the gatherer aroused attention in Christian circles. The old assailant of the Jews, Michaelis, did not remain silent. Others greeted it as the non-promising of their day. It was in fact daybreak for the Jewish race. What is the distinction of the culture people? Next to gentle manners, he consists in taste for harmonious forms and in the power to produce artistic creations. This taste and power, lost through external oppression and internal disorganization, were reawakened for all five among the Jews by the organ of the Mieskin. To elevate the Jewish race to the rank of the cultured nations, nothing new was required. It was merely necessary that a comprehension of the beauties and sublimities of their own literature be inculcated. 
In this period, the Jizong oh, found that. philosophical thinkers, if not of the first, certainly of the second rank, who in acuteness of intellect almost surpassed Mendelssohn. We are especially to be mentioned, who, though trained in the Mendelssohnian system, soon recognized its weaknesses, and directed their minds to new paths. These were Marcus Herz, Solomon Meehan, and then David. The events of their lives... A turret is locking up. Trace ...as a whole worked its way from degradation and ignorance to fame and enlightenment. Marcus Mordecai was born in Berlin, 1747. Can you take him out, please? He died 1803. Ouch. 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 Thank you. himself and his family by mm, copying good job. manuscripts. He received his Talmudical education in the school founded by Ephraim Vital. Owing Come to on. poverty, he was unable, in spite of his talents, to continue his studies, but at 15 years of age was compelled to go to Kegsburg as an apprentice. The desire for knowledge soon withdrew him from business and led him to the university, as the Albertina at that time admitted Jewish youths to the medical department. Philosophy, however, exerted greater attraction upon him. Hers was regarded as being gifted with a keen mind peculiar to the Jewish nation. Yet, then at oh. worst upon his monumental system, Dang it. saw hers in his audience as often as the medical professors saw him in theirs. He distinguished him, drew him into the circle of his intimates, and treated him as his favorite disciple. When entering upon his professorship, according to an absurd and antiquated custom, Kent had argued in public <laughs> his philosophical tour of six subjects, and found no one better Damn fitted it. than hers to act as his assistant. Several university representatives objected that a Jewish student, however talented and superior to his Christian companions, should be allowed equal privileges with them. Kant, however, insisted upon his demand. Pressed by pecuniary difficulties, and because a Jew could not receive the degree of the Kegsberg University, Hers returned to his native town and joined Mendelssohn's circle. He was, however, an advocate of the Kantian philosophy. He became at the same time a skilled physician, and practiced his art with conscientiousness and zeal. By his marriage with Henrietta Helena, he secured a large practice and numerous acquaintances as assistant physician to his Portuguese father-in-law. And through his incisive wit and versatile knowledge, he became a noted personage in the Prussian capital. When he delivered philosophical lectures upon the Kantian philosophy, still new and but little understood, many distinguished men were among his auditors. Had not progressed been great, if notably set at the feet of a Jew to hear his instruction upon the highest truths, whilst men like Michaelis roundly denied all possibility of culture in the Jews. Hers afterwards delivered discourses upon physics, and illustrated the marvelous laws of nature by experimental demonstration. These lectures were still more crowded. Even the crown prince afterwards, King Frederick William III and other princes did not disdain to enter the house of a Jew and be taught by him. His philosophical lucidity, acquired from Kant and Mendelssohn, contributed towards rendering his lectures upon medicine, as well as upon other subjects, enjoyable and appreciated. My mask was not, is not however, an independent thinker, able to illumine the dark ways of human knowledge by brilliant ideas. But he succeeded in explaining the profound 407 thoughts of others and in making them intelligible to the average mind. Through his personality and his social position, hers deeply influenced not alone the culture of Berlin Jews, but also of Christian circles. Of the remarkable capacity of Jews for culture, Solomon Maimon was a still more striking example. This Pole, whose real name was Solomon of Lithuania, or of Misui, is born about 1753, died 1800, rose from the thickest cloud of Polish ignorance to pure philosophical knowledge, attaining this height by his unaided efforts, but owing to his scepticism, he fell a prey to shocking errors. The story of his life is full of travel and restlessness, and is a good example of the versatility of Jews. As in the case of Mendelssohn, May Muni's philosophical religious work, The Guide of the Perplexed More Nebuchim, was the cause of Solomon's intellectual awakening. He read the book until it became part of him, consequently assumed the name of Maimon, swore by the name of a Jewish sage whenever evil desire prompted him to sin, and conquered by its aid. But whereas Mendelssohn reached the right way through Maimuni, Solomon Maimon was led into error, doubt, and unbelief, and to the end of his life lived an aimless existence. In despair he snatched at the Kabbalah, wishing to become a Jewish Faust, to conjure up spirits who would obtain deep wisdom for him. He also made a pilgrimage to the leader of the Chesidim, Beer of Mizrich. But the deception practiced disgusted him, and he quickly turned away from him. But what was he, with his spirit of scepticism, to do in a narrow world of rigid orthodoxy? Continually play the hypocrite? Rumor had carried a report to Poland, that in certain towns of Germany a freer religious system prevailed, and that more scope for philosophical inquiry was given. At this period a Pole felt no scruples in forsaking 408 wife, children, and home, and wandering abroad. It cost me the less effort, seeing that his wife had been thrust upon him when he was a child, and it was to his vexation that children were born to him. 
to appease his conscience he deceived himself by the pretext that he would study medicine in Germany, and be enabled to maintain himself and his family. Thus Mayan left Lithuania's plane, 1777, at the age of 25, with a heavy, dirty beard, in torn, filthy clothes, his language and jargon composed of fragments of Hebrew, Jud German, and Polish, together with grammatical errors, as he himself says, and in disguise he introduced himself to some educated Jews in Kingsburg, saying that he desired to devote himself to science. In this ragged pool was a brain full of profound thoughts, which, as he grew older, developed into maturity. His journey from Kingsburg to Berlin by way of Stenen was a succession of political troubles. In Berlin the authorities refused to grant him residence. Those Poles who had severed themselves from the Talmud, and devoted themselves to science, lived in the order of the worst heresy, and often gave occasion to suspicion. Maimon was sincere enough to admit the justice of his opinion. A moral life, activity of any kind, participation in the work of mankind, utilization of talent in the conquest of nature, man's liberation from the shackles of self-interest, the awakening of his moral impulse to act for the welfare of his slave, the realization of the heavenly kingdom of justice and beneficent love of all these ideals Maimon had no appreciation. These were indifferent matters, with which a thinker need not trouble himself, in this unsound state of mind he shunned all ample work. To meditate I will draw up corner of work his chief occupations. He attained no fixed goal in life, but staggered from folly to folly, from misery to misery. 409 to the general public he was first known through his autobiography, wherein he revealed the weak points of the Polish Jews, to him the only representatives of Judaism, as well as his own, with unsparing, cynical severity, as some years previously Rousseau had done in his confessions. He thereby performed an evil service for his co-religionists. His opinions concerning his brethren, originating in ill humor, were accepted to their detriment as universal characteristics. And what he depicted as hateful in the Polish Jews was attributed to all Jews. This kind of confession was considered extraordinary, and aroused great attention, in stiff, pedantic Germany. The autobiography found its way into numerous circles, and gained many readers. The two great German poets, Schiller and Goethe, were absurdly fond of the cynical philosopher. And Goethe expressed the wish to have him live near him. His fame made Neiman neither better nor happier, and he did honor to the Jewish race only with his mental powers. In his actions he altogether dishonored it. The third Jewish thinker of this time, Lazarus van David born in Berlin 1762, died there 1832, had neither the tragic nor the comic history of Maine. He was a crazy, pedantic personality, who in any German university could have filled the chair of logic and mathematics, and year after year given the same instruction unabridged and unincreased. For the philosophy of Kant, however, then David possessed ardor and enthusiastic devotion, because he recognized it as the truth, and faithfully conformed to its moral principles. This philosophy was well suited to Jews, because it demanded high power of thought and moral action. For this reason Kant, like Aristotle in former days, had many Jewish admirers and disciples. Then David was also learned in the Talmud, and a good mathematician. It was perhaps a mistake on the short and part to go to Vienna to lecture upon the Kantian philosophy. At first the university permitted his discourses in its halls, Jew lecturing on a philosophy which denied the right of Catholicism to exist. He soon however had to discontinue them. But Count Herrick offered him his palace as a lecture room. Meeting with obstacles here, too, he left the imperial city, continued his discourses in Berlin, and for some time acted as editor of the journal. Then David produced but little impression upon the course of Jewish history. The German Jews, however, under Mendelssohn's inspiration, not only elevated themselves with great rapidity to the height of culture, but unmistakably promoted the spread of culture in Christian circles. Intellectual Jews and Jews has created in Berlin that cultured public tone which has become the distinction of this capital, and has influenced the whole of Germany. Jews and Jewesses were the first to found a salon for intellectual intercourse, in which the elements of elevated thought, taste, poetry, and criticism mingled together in a graceful, light way, and were discussed, and made accessible to men of different vocations. The Christian populace of Berlin at the time of Frederick the Great and his successor greatly resembled that of a petty town. The nobility and high dignitaries were too aristocratic and uneducated to trouble themselves about intellectual and social affairs in the outside world. More than the fourth and the petty events of everyday life were the world. The learned formed an exclusive guild, and there was no high or wealthy class of burghers. The middle classes followed the narrow path of their old-fashioned German fathers. Met, if at all, over the beer jug, and were continually engaged in repeating stories of old Christmas victories. Particularly, the women lived modestly within their four walls, or occupied themselves fully with the concerns of their family circles 411 with the Jews of Berlin it was entirely different. All, or most of them, had been more or less engaged with the Talmud in their youth. 
their mental powers were acute, and susceptible to fresh influences. These new elements of culture Mendelssohn gave them through his Bible translation, and his philosophical and poetic writings. In Jewish circles, knowledge procured more distinction than riches. The ignorant man, however wealthy, was held up as a threat for contempt. Every Jew, whatever his means, prided himself on possessing a collection of old and new books, and, when possible, sought to know their contents, so that he might not be wanting in conversation. Every well-informed Jew lived in two worlds, that of business, and that of books. In consequence of the impulse given by Mendelssohn, the younger generation occupied itself with belles lettres, language, and philosophy. The subjects of study had changed, but the yearning for knowledge remained, or became still stronger. I was clicking my mouse a bunch of times there, just to say, yeah, it's not. Shortly after the death of Mendelssohn, were more than a hundred young men burning with zeal for knowledge and culture, from whose midst the contributors to the periodical Hamisat were supplied. To this honest inclination for study, there was added a fashionable product. Through Frederick the Great, French literature became acclimatized in Russia, and the Jews were especially attracted to the intellectuality of French wit. Voltaire had more admirers in the tents of Jacob than in German houses. Jewish youths ravenously flung themselves upon French Please don't kill me. and acquired its wives. Bone wave, I'll do anything you say. French frivolity naturally made its entry at the same time. The clever daughters of Israel also ardently devoted themselves to this fashionable folly. They learned French, at first, to be sure, for the purpose of conversing in the fashionable language with the youthful cavaliers who borrowed for twelve money from their fathers. It was one more ornament with which to deck themselves. Through the influence of Mendelssohn and Lessing, such trifling gave way to earnest endeavors for the acquisition of solid knowledge, in order that they might occupy an equally exalted footing with the men. Mendelssohn's daughters, who were continually in the society of cultivated men, led the way, and stirred up emulation. In no town of Germany were there so many cultured Jewish women as in Berlin, for they learned easily, were industrious, and altogether superior to their Christian sisters in knowledge of literature. Mendelssohn's house became the center for scientific and literary intercourse, and was the more frequented as his friends might expect to meet distinguished strangers there who were attracted by his widespread renown, and from whom something new might be learned. His daughters were admitted to this witty and charming society, to which they also introduced their young companions. After Mendelssohn's death, David Friedelder and Marcus Hurst took his place. Friedelder was, however, too stiff and plain to exercise attraction. Thus, Hurst's house became headquarters for Mendelssohn's friends, who became the nucleus of a large circle. Hers was a popular physician, and had numerous acquaintances among distinguished Jewish and Christian families. His lectures attracted people of every rank to his house, and those eager for knowledge were admitted into the intimacy of the family circle. Hers was gifted with cross with which he ceased the conversation. But more powerful than his science and his genius was the influence of his wife. Hers was a magic circle, into which every native or foreign personage of importance in Berlin was magnetically drawn. Intercourse with the beautiful and gifted Jews and Rienna Hers was, next to the court circle, before 13 job, Tom. years Thank after you. in Berlin. Had she not been misled by seductive influences, she might have been a source of rich blessings to Judaism. This beautiful woman, then, made her house the gathering place of the select society of Berlin, and illustrious strangers pressed for the honor of an introduction to her. Here the Christian friends of Mendelssohn, already accustomed to intercourse with Jews, mingled freely with cultured Jews, but also new men, who filled high positions. Hey, Sonic Frictiers, are you still there? In whose mind the storm-charged clouds of the revolution I need two verses, too. <laughs> Son Sonic Frictiers, how do you say your name? Berlin was more in the society of Henrietta Hers than in that of her husband. Gradually, ladies of high degree and education Yo. also entered into relations with Madame Hers and her friends, attracted by the charm of refined um, social communion. But her salon exercised most when did that come through? And that annoys me, I don't get a chime. You know, you could have been watching the whole the match and the never responded. Because I'm busy. However, <laughs> form the of the yeah, man, I need two versus two. Um, entertainment and distinguish themselves by their originality. For my objective theory. thing, Among within 24 hours or 22 hours or 20 hours. Modern culture with Jewish genius of mind and wit. Mendelssohn's eldest daughter Dorothea wow. and Rachel Lovett. Ouch! Afterwards, the wife of Arnold and Von Hans. Captain Pugwash. In addition to which, Rachel Lovett had an inflexible love for truth, united with gentleness and amiability. Almost at the same time, a brilliant salon, where authors, artists, nobles, and diplomatists, native and foreign, came together, was opened in Vienna by a Berlin Jewess, Fanny Itzig, daughter of the 414 banker Daniel Itzig. She was witty, amiable, and noble, and was married to Nathan Adam von Arnstein, who had been made a baron. Like her friends in Berlin, she brought about the social intermingling of Jews with Christians in Vienna. 
these Jewish coteries most triumphantly refuted the foolish remark of the insolent scholar of GTN that gypsies would soon what? undergo the transformation into a people than Jews. The prejudice of a thousand years was blown away with one breath more effectively than by a hundred learned or eloquent dispositions. The social equalization of the Jews in cultivated circles of Prussia caused them to hope, if not for complete civil rights, at least for a lightening of the oppressive taxes and the humiliations imposed upon them. Between the social position of cultured Jews and their legal standing there was a deep chasm. In the burger classes, the Jews of Berlin were the first millionaires Oh, in different matter considering the important place held by money at that time, but, according to the law, they were treated like peddlers. Humane treatment could not be expected from the philosophical oh, king. Shit. Dom's apology for the Jews did not exist for him. Both was aroused among the Berlin Jews on the accession yeah, of Martin William II, like, who was an elite but kindly nature. Yeah, come on, Urged you know you want to step out. Dirt. Who, Come the successor on. of Mendelssohn, was at the same time considered the representative of Jewish interests. The chiefs and elders of the Berlin community presented a petition for the abolition of the Jewish poll tax, the repeal of barbarous laws against the Jews, and the concession of freedom of movement. They received a favorable reply, directing it's them to choose men from their midst, with whom the government might Down. negotiate. Their proposal to select delegates from amongst the Jews in the provinces was as an adieu, and a commission was forth 15 established to investigate the complaints of the Russian Jews and make suggestions for improvement. As general deputies of the Jews there were selected Friedel Dürer and his rich father-in-law, Daniel Itzig, who, with great independence and courage, laid bare the barbarous and venal legislation of Frederick the Great in reference to the Jews. The deputies drew up a list of the imposts extorted from the Jews, bearing ridiculous titles. For instance, the exportation of porcelain, which bound them to purchase articles of the worst quality for an exorbitant price called in mockery Jews porcelain from the royal manufactory and to sell them abroad. And taxes for the support of manufactories for caps, stockings, pocket handkerchiefs, and bales. They pointed out burdensome restrictions, how in courts of justice they were not treated as the equals of Christian suitors, and they especially complained of the responsibility laid upon all for each, and boldly demanded complete equalization, not mere Big permission to engage in agriculture and trades, but also Just to fill public offices and that was one of, Yeah, that was one of those things where I'm telling myself to lift my finger and I can't do it. It's that my conscious battle. mind is going Only the to deal do in something. Was a note for a sum of 4, uh, does it happen? The body tax was also repealed for native Jews journeying from province what? to They're province kicking and for strangers ass. when frequenting the fair at Frankfurt on the order of December Banga? 1787. July 1788. This release from slavery had been affected by Ouch, Joseph Stephen by Louis X. B.I. of France several years previously. Indecision. <laughs> the officials therefore advised the so that was. the Jewish poll tax from shame. But the gain was not great, for, as Prussian Jews had to prove themselves such at every public gate, the stigma was not removed. The ultimate result of the petition of the Jewish deputies was lamentable. What was given with one hand, 416 was taken away with the other. It redounds to the honor of the deputies that they frankly rejected the paltry, narrow-minded concessions, remarking, the intended favors are below our expectations, and hardly afford with the joy for these entertained at the accession of the king. They declared that they were not empowered to accept the reforms offered, which contained few advantages and many restrictions, especially as regarded the enlistment of common soldiers. Only certain individual Jews received exceptional equalization of rights. Orders were given that in official acts they should not be treated as Jews. Otherwise everything continued as a old, only slight relief being given to the Jews in Sevilla. Thus a nucleus for the elevation of the Jewish race was formed in the Berlin community, and their efforts were encouraged, if not by the state, at least by public opinion. In two ways their action influenced a wider circle of all the free school Chinich Nirin, and the printing establishment connected with it. The free school, conducted by David Friedel during his brother-in-law, its Nielsen, was not managed according to Wesley's ideal plan. The curriculum was composed mainly of the subjects of the general education, and gradually everything Jewish Hebrew, the Bible, the Talmud was crowded out. <laughs> in 10 years 1781 to 1791, on? over 500 yeah. well-taught pupils were gone. graduated from the school apostles of the Berlin spirit, who spread its influence in all directions. It became a model of school for German and other communities. With similar ends in view, the printing press sent into the ghettos a large number of instructive works in Hebrew and German. The spirit engendered thereby was at first one of skepticism, of superficial enlightenment. Its aim was to eradicate from Jewish life and manners everything that offended cultured taste or made the Jews for 17 objects of derision, but it included in its attack whatever did not at once recommend itself to the sober-minded, and so tended to obliterate everything that recalled the great events of the past, and that caused the Jews to appear as a separate race in the eyes of Christians. The dearest ambition of the advocates of this movement was to resemble Christians in every respect. 
enlightenment, culture were their passwords, the idols of their worship, to which they sacrificed everything. Mendelssohn had left no disciple of any importance able to recognize the great truths of Judaism, and bring them into accord with culture. Men like Hebel, L.E., Friedel Dürr, Hirsch, and almost all the Nisman, possessed mediocre minds and limited views. They were unable to scatter abroad fruit bearing germs of thought. Despite their enthusiasm for Mendelssohn, they did not appreciate the essence of his nature, and thought that he was still in their midst, when they had long forsaken him. Ouch. Even his own children, not accepting um. his accomplished daughters, misunderstood him. And this misconception resulted in great confusion. With every step forward taken by the Berlin School of Enlightenment, it became more opposed to the main body of Judaism, vexing its susceptibilities, and thereby frustrating its own efficacy. Misunderstandings, bitter feelings, friction, and strife were the direct consequences. The ultra-orthodox party, however, numbered still fewer men of importance than the advanced school. The most eminent leader among them, or the one regarded as such, Ezekiel Landau, in Prague, had not the slightest sympathy with the new tendency, but thoughtlessly clung to every usage however unjustifiable, and thereby injured the cause he represented. He had only condemnation and denunciation as heretics for those who withdrew from the well-trodden path. Owing to the friction between the progressive 418 and the Orthodox parties, both of whom exceeded all proper bounds, an exciting war sprang up in the Berlin community. Young men ride tutors, merchants and apprentices, the sons of the rich, and fashionable youths hosted of religious philosophy, and proudly despised their hoary religion, considering everything that interfered with their pleasures as superstition, prejudice, and rabbinical folly. The adherents of the old views therefore grew the more tenacious, and held to everything that bore a religious stamp. As the Orthodox female leaders still had the upper hand in even other institutions, they refused support to the partisans of enlightenment, especially to strangers, would not admit their sick into the Jewish hospital, and denied the dead honorable burial. In short, all the phenomena that usually accompany religious party conflicts appeared. Those without families, among whom were two prominent Mesmen, Michael and Wilson, determined to unite together so as not to stand isolated against the Orthodox party. They desired to form a union for the protection of its members. Mendelssohn's eldest son, Joseph, was very zealous in promoting such a union, and on the strength of his name it met with abundant encouragement. My turret is locking up. Friends was born That's a drag. A community of Illuminati within the community, comprising solely unmarried men, the whose aim was to regard each other as brothers, and to support each other in distress and illness. But their collateral intention was to spread culture and promote enlightenment. Start going out, Thanks sister. To the saying of Mendelssohn as their motto: to seek the truth, to love the beautiful, to desire the good, to do the best. A bundle of staves was their symbol. In the first year of its existence, the union numbered more than a hundred members in the capital. Young men in Kaysburg, Berlau, and Vienna joined the ranks. A bond of cordial 419 brotherhood held the members together, and to the present day, a fraternal feeling of delicate benevolence has survived in the society. But it was a morbid symptom. The society floated in the air without a firm basis. It had roots neither in its own midst, nor in Judaism, nor did it attach itself to any great political ideal. It aimed at bodily welfare and attitude, as if civilized men could live by bread only, the catchwords and phrases of culture and enlightenment did not avail much. The struggle against the old regime was but weak. All that they succeeded in doing was to keep their deceased friends longer above ground. In short, the society of friends lacked the leaven of inspiration, the only quality which ultimately bears fruit. If the members of the society took up no firm attitude, those who never knew an ideal, nor even a dreamy striding, the commonplace men who were mere slaves, and sought their whole happiness in mixing with Christians, acted yet more pulsely. The old system had no charms for them, and the new one no tangible form to attract them. The example of the court and high circles of society exercised an evil influence also upon the Jews of the large towns of Prussia. Under Frederick William II, as Mirabeau remarks from his own observation, Prussia had fallen into a condition of rottenness, before having attained the stage of maturity. Jewish youths of wealthy houses followed the general inclination to sensual pleasures. Not secretly, but openly in the light of day, the overnight adults, and with contempt of Judaism united contempt for chastity and morality. They ate other apes. Earnest men, such as David Friedel Durr, Lazarus, Monkey Bezzer, say Monkey Do. <laughs> the decay of morality among the Jews, without noticing that their own shallow desire for enlightenment had contributed to it. 420. Vices have spread in our midst, which our fathers knew not, and which at any price have been bought too dearly. 
Here in the gym, voluptuousness, and effeminacy, weeds that spring from the misuse of enlightenment and culture, have alas, taken root amongst us, and especially in the principal towns we are exposed to the danger that the stream of luxury along with our brushness is sweeping away our severe and simple morals. Having broken loose from the bond of the national religion existing for thousands of years, superficial reasoners and profligates passed over to Christianity in a body. They were like moths, fluttering around the flame, till they were consumed. Of what use was it to be gailed by the fetters of the general privilege, of what use to continue to bear the disgrace of being protected Jews, if by the repetition of an empty formula they could become equal to the Christians? So they washed away the mark of the yoke and its shame with the waters of baptism. The congregations of Berlin, Grillau, and Kegsburg beheld daily the apostasy of their members, of the richest and outwardly the most cultured people. It appeared as if the words of the prophet would be verified, I will leave in the midst of the and afflicted and poor people. It must be considered a miracle that the entire Jewish party of enlightenment in Germany did not abjure Judaism. Three invisible powers kept them from falling en masse the example of treachery and apostasy, deep aversion to the dogma of divine incarnation, indestructible attachment to their families and to their great past of thousands of years, and love for the Hebrew language and literature. Without suspecting it, they felt themselves united as a nation, a link in the long chain of the history of the Jewish race, and they could not persuade themselves to separate from it. The revival of Hebrew through the Mesium had had beneficial influence in this direction. Whoever could comprehend the beauties and elevated thoughts of biblical literature, and could imitate the language, remained for 21 a Jew in spite of secret doubts, degradation, and disgrace. Thus Mendelssohn provided the new generation both with a poison and its antidote. David Friedelder alone proved an exception to this rule. Neither Jewish antiquity, nor Hebrew poetry, nor family ties, had power to keep him loyal to his banner, even with half-hearted devotion. The tearing asunder of all family connections, the casting aside of the duties of the religious brotherhood, did indeed oppress him. Nevertheless, he proceeded to sever himself from the Jewish community and to desert to the hostile camp. He had striven to obtain for himself and his whole family an exceptional naturalization with all its rights and duties, but had not succeeded. No hard feelings, dude. Uh, uh, I just uh, and instead of yeah. hiding his annoyance in the pride of ancestry and martyrdom, I need people that uh, on behalf of his co-religionists so as to surpass the haughty Christians, he coveted the honor of joining them. Friedel Durer, however, did not desire to affect this desertion alone or absolutely. He therefore, together with other fathers on family, doing similarly thing, disposed, yeah. in a cowardly manner directed a letter, without mentioning either himself or others by name, to the chief consistorial counselor Teller, who was on friendly terms with the Jews. This letter expressed their desire for conversion and baptism, under the condition that they might be excused from believing in Jesus, and from participating in the rites of the church, or that at least they might be allowed to explain Christian dogmas in their own manner suggestion equally silly and dishonorable. Friedel Dürr could not deny that, among the Jews, virtue was general, benevolence inherent, parental and filial love, and the sanctity of marriage deeply rooted, self-sacrifice for the sake of others frequent. And that, on the other hand, gross crimes order, robbery, and outrage are rare. But this bright side of their servile state seemed to 422 him only a secondary matter. Therefore, in this foolish letter, he libeled his people and its past, called the Talmud that mental tonic mysticism, spoke in logical confusion now of the harmful character, now of the utility of the ritual laws of Judaism, and sketched the development of Jewish history in a day not to be excelled for perversity. Teller disposed of the Jewish fathers who prayed to Christianity without Jesus politely, but decisively, as they deserved. They might remain what they were, for Christianity had no desire for such infidel believers. Friedel Dürr had met with an ignominious experience. He remained a Jew, but his children pressed forward to be baptized without conditions or qualifications. His letter however aroused more attention than it deserved. If the German Jews, especially those of Berlin, through their intercourse with Christian society, and their interest in literature, gained an external conduct, in forms of politeness, and social manners advantages not to be underrated they lost something for which there was no compensation. The chastity of Jewish women and maidens during their isolation had been of inviolable sanctity. The happiness of family life rested upon this precious basis. Jewish women were seldom married for love he ghetto was not the place for the dallyings of love that after marriage duty induced love. This sanctuary, the pride of Israel, which filled earnest Christians with admiration, and led them highly to esteem the Jews, became dishonored by their association with Christians of the corrupt higher ranks. If the enemies of the Jews had designed to break the power of Israel, they could have discovered no more effectual means than infecting Jewish women with moral depravity, a plan more efficacious than that employed by the Midianites, who weakened the men by immorality. The salon of the beautiful Henrietta Herz became a sort of Midianite tent 423 here a number of young Jewish women assembled, whose husbands were kept away by their business. 
the most prominent male member of the circle was Frederick von Jens, the embodiment of selfishness, licentiousness, vice, and depravity, whose chief occupation was the betrayal of women. Henrietta Hers was the first to be confused and led astray by homage to her beauty. It was the time when German Romanticism, the product of Gutta's muse, began to act upon the minds of men, urging them to translate lyrical emotions into reality, and transfigure life poetically. This romantic tendency resulted in fostering sentimentality and in infamous marriages which were contracted and dissolved at pleasure. A so-called band of virtuous and fun was formed, of which Henrietta Hers, two daughters of Mendelssohn, and other Jews, together with Christian Protestants, were members. The Jewish women felt themselves exalted and honored by their close intimacy with Christians of rank. They did not see the fang serpent beneath the flowers. With William von Humboldt, an ardent Jew, afterwards a Prussian minister, Henrietta secretly maintained an amatory correspondence behind her husband's back. When William von Humboldt married, and forgot Henrietta, who had been misled by her vanity, she entered into an ambiguous relation with Schleimacher, the modern apostle of the new Christianity. Their conspicuous intimacy was mocked at by acquaintances, even more than by strangers. Both parties denied somewhat too anxiously the criminality of their intimate intercourse. Whether true or not, it was disgrace enough that evil tongues should even suspect the honor of a Jewish matron of good family. My turret keeps locking up. Schlegel, who stormed heaven with childish strength, chameleon in sentiments and views, enthusiastic for 24 now for the Republic, now for monarchical despotism, who conjured up the specters and evil spirits of the Middle Ages. Introduced into the salon of hers, he became the bosom friend of Schleiermacher, and at once resolved to seduce Dorothea Mendelssohn. Her father had died with the knowledge that she was joined in happy wedlock to the banker Simon B. Witzenhausen. Her husband surrounded her with marks of attention and love. Two children were the issue of this marriage. Nevertheless, she allowed herself to be led into faithlessness by the treacherous voice of the romantic Schlegel. It was the fashion in this society to complain about being misunderstood and the discord of souls. The immoral teachings of Goethe's elective affinities had already taken root in Jewish families. The thought of parting from her husband and children did not restrain Dorothea from going astray, and Henrietta Hers acted as go between. Dorothea therefore left her husband, and lived with Schlegel, at first in unlawful union. All the world was astounded at this immorality, which dragged Mendelssohn's honorable name in the mud. Dr. Hers forbade his wife to hold intercourse with this depraved woman. But she herself was at heart an adulteress, and informed her husband that she would not forsake her friend. Schleiermacher, the preacher, also took but little offense at this dissolute conduct. Dorothea followed her romantic betrayer from one folly to another, was baptized as a Protestant, and finally, together with him, became converted to Catholicism. It was a lamentable sight when Mendelssohn's daughter kissed the toe of the coat. The younger sister, Emilia Mendelssohn, was not handsome enough to involve the libertines of the salon. It suffices to indicate her bent of mind to say that she also went over to Catholicism. The consequence of this internal corruption was to render the participators out of sorts with life. For 25 Rachel Lovell, another high-spirited woman, was too clever to take part in the frivolity of the band of virtue, she desired to pursue her own way. But her wisdom and clear mind did not secure her against the contamination of immorality. In one respect she was superior to her sinful Jewish sisters. She was truthful, and wore no mask. When Rachel first made the acquaintance of the heroic but dissolute Prince Louis Ferdinand, she undertook to teach him dare truths. But she rather learned from him the follies of the palace. Herself unmarried, she consented to become the intermediary between him and the abandoned Colleen Weasel. Rachel Lovett, or, as she was also called, Rachel Robert, in whose veins flowed Talmudic blood, which endowed her with a bright and active mind, and enabled her to penetrate to the very foundation of things, and pursue the soul and its daring instincts in their subtlest manifestations, ignore her own origin. She desired to distinguish the breath of God in the mutations of history, yet had no appreciation of the greatness of her race. She despised it, considering it the greatest shame and her worst misfortune to have been born a Jewess. Only in the hour of death did a faint suspicion of the great importance of Judaism and the Jews cross her mind. With exalted delight I meditate upon my origin and the web of history, through which the oldest reminiscences of the human race are united with present affairs, this my distance of time and space. I, a fugitive from Egypt, am here, and find assistance. What all my life I considered my greatest disgrace, I now would not give up for any price. But even in that hour her mind did not see clearly, her thoughts were disordered, and she exhausted herself in fantastic dreams. These talented but simple Jewish women did Judaism a service by becoming Christians. 
Mendelssohn's daughters and Rachel were converted publicly, while Henrietta Hers, who had more regard for 26 for appearances, received baptism in a small town to avoid hurting her Jewish friends, and took this step only after her mother's death. Schleiermacher again inoculated the cultivated classes in Germany with a peculiar, scarcely definable, antipathy to Judaism. He was in no way a Jew baiter, in the usual sense of the term, and indignantly protested against being called so. But his mind was agitated with a vague, disagreeable feeling towards the Jews, from which he could not escape. When Friedel Durr's foolish letter on the admission of certain families into Christianity divested of the dogma of the Trinity, was published, Schleiermacher expressed himself adverse to their admission. The state might concede to the Jews the rights of citizenship, but should tolerate them only as a special sect, in aspect as they would not surrender their hope in the Messiah. It was quite in accordance with his romantic neo-Christianity, that from ignorance and confusion he depicted Judaism as a mummy around which its sons sit mummy and weeping. He would not even acknowledge Judaism as the forerunner of Christianity. I looked at this sort of historical relationship in religion. Hitherto, Christendom had been conscious of a certain connection with Judaism, and the Old Testament, the Bible, had been the common ground upon which the insolent daughter and the enslaved mother met, and for the moment forgot their hatred. To this connection, or its recognition, the Jews owed their salvation in the sad days of excess of Christian faith, or they would have been altogether annihilated in Europe. The papacy protected them, because the Savior had come from their midst. This bond Schleiermacher destroyed at a breath. To have anything in common with the Jews enraged him. But were not Jesus, the Apostles, and the early fathers of the Church, Jews? Schleiermacher would only recognize this for a fun fact, if he could possibly have done it. But as this was impractical, he enshrouded it in mystery. What? We are to believe that Jesus was only a Jewish rabbi, with philanthropic sentiments, and some Socratic morality. With certain miracles, or at least what some consider as such, and with the talent of composing neat riddles and parables own follies will even then have to be forgiven him, according to the first three evangelists. And such a man could have established a new religion and a church man who cannot be compared with Moses and Muhammad? This fact Schleiermacher could not tolerate. For in such case, not only Moses the prophet, but also Moses Mendelssohn, the sage of Berlin, would have been greater. Therefore Schleiermacher removed his Jesus far away from Judaism. He had only had the accident of birth in common with the Jews, but he was superhuman, and still a man, whose consciousness of God may properly be called existence of God within him, as it is expressed in this mystic, extravagant, romantic teaching, which thus took its own chief under its protection. Schleiermacher's sermons were filled with this kind of word juggling, to which the Berlin Jews, especially the women, listened as devoutly as their ancestors to the lying tricks of the false prophets. The school of Schleiermacher, which became the leading influence in Germany, made this intense contempt of Judaism its password and the basis of its orthodoxy. At the same time, another romanticist, Chateaubriand, invented new, flimsy supports for Christianity, which was in ruins and almost forgotten in France. Even though he traced the origin of the arts, music, painting, architecture, eloquence, and poetry to Christianity, he, at least, did not deny a share in these merits to Judaism, nor mm. only with the intention of claiming for Christianity the noblest features in Hebrew literature and history. There are only two bright names and memories in history, those of the Israelites and the Colossian Greeks. When Chateaubriand desired to prove his assertion that 428 the poetry of nature is the invention of Christianity, he cited as examples the beautiful descriptions in Job, in the Prophets, and the Psalms, to whose poetry the works of Pindar and Horace were much inferior. Chateaubriand gathered the flowers of Hebrew poetry to weave a beautiful garland for his crucified God. But he did not, like Schleiermacher, crush Judaism into the dust by denying the paternity of the child grown to be so powerful. A new jugphobia sprang from the neo-Christian school, which, as its originators obtained political influence, grew much stronger than that of old Orthodox Christianity. It is remarkable that the twofold reaction, that of the church, brought about by Schleiermacher, and that of the political world, which is connected with Jens, had its rise in the Jug Christian Salon in Berlin. But in the same year when the effeminate Schleiermacher, in his romantic delineation of himself, calumniated Judaism by describing it as a mummy, there arose a man, a hero, a giant in comparison with these wretched dwarfs, who issued a summons for the Jews to gather around his standard. He wished to conquer the holy land of their fathers for them, and, a second Cyrus, to rebuild their temple. The freedom which the Berlin Jews desired to attain by the surrender of their peculiarities, and by humiliation before the church, they now obtained through France, without paying this price and without disgraceful bargaining. 429. Chapters Die. 
the French Revolution and the emancipation of the Jews. Foreshadowing of the French Revolution are Barrier Bow and the Jewish Question and France or Isaac Barry Jewish Question and the National Assembly Qualization of Portuguese Jews FFORTS to equalize Paris Jews Jewish Question Deferred Qualization of French Jews Ain of Terror Qualization of Jews of Holland Dash Jeshur and Congregation Pred of Emancipation All Depart in Palestine Ex Jew Hatred People Tax Runs Petition of Jews of Germany Jacobson Writing Dr. Ephraim Alexander I of Russia His Attempts to Improve the Condition of the Jews of Russia 1791 to 1805 CE he who believes that providence manifests itself in history, that sins, crimes, and follies on the whole serve to elevate mankind, finds in the French Revolution complete confirmation of this faith.
I need to get some, <clears throat> like if you notice in the in, in the bottom right corner of my uh, stream here, I'm pretty sure that's uh, from the original uh, thing. The guy, the 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 guy getting all the arcs of electricity is happening. The guy getting taste or whatever. It's actually the thing from the original thing uh, from Beyond or whatever. And that, that's one of the um, um, folders I want to get, is, is get the, uh, the uh, animated gifts from the Thing movie. So, um, I, I, I want to say something here, a, a little bit of break about these, uh, these image streams. Like, um, we have this... Google images, artificial intelligence or whatever, right? Um, and 
it's able to connect in terms of imagery right with all these little individuals like you know the the like say you take these little clips of, of mr. Spock right right there that if you get those like you how do you get those you go on Google and I'm gonna demonstrate this in a second you go on Google and you search for uh, Spock Star Trek animated gift right and what the the engine does is it goes out over the internet right and uh, it finds all these uh, you know key uh, things that, that various individuals all over the place where they're like this is representative for them it was you know wow that's just primo so check right next to it uh, up here the Bruce Lee right um, you collect all these things and you're, you're sort of tapping into the uh, uh, all these individual people made all these little clips these are these are clips like if you think of it as like collective video editing these are are things that people found key about Bruce Lee likewise Peter Laurie right if you go down, go down here the the if somebody has made made a little the thing about uh, a, a short uh, animation just a couple of seconds or the clip from a movie uh, that's just a few second lo seconds long is that the individual that made that cut the the editor or whatever they somehow felt that this was very representational and very key uh, related to this so um, and I, I had backed away from the thing but I, I, I don't know this is not for 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 little kids right now I guess I should say I don't, I don't know if I, I really want to do this let, let, let me see what happens what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I'm opening another window now and I'm gonna maybe uh, demonstrate um, I'm conflicted you know what I'm gonna show this and the thing about it is is because these little kids are seeing this stuff anyway and if they're gonna see it they should see it with their uh, with a, a friend of theirs and I, I hope I'm a friend to every kid to every human being I really do uh, who can uh, sort of uh, guide them uh, on, on how to respond to it so uh, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna open this thing uh, And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the thing. And I'm just going to put GIF. And, you know, it, it isn't thing also the walking hand in the Adams family? So I'm waiting for it to come up now. Oh, that's scary. Awful. Thank you. 
What a yeah. This is a very uh, very intense. So there's various ways to scrape these. Um, and, and I mean, you can you can right click on them one by one, and um, and save them for sure. Uh, but just a word of advice, if you're interested uh, in, in this, if you if you find your Opera GX cache right and go in uh, your image cache and you, you you can Google that to find out how to do it, and you go in and you clear it right, you you clear it clear it out. And then do this on a particular theme. You're gonna you're gonna find what all the people in the world around the internet and all these different places felt were the key moments on this of this topic thing. Right, so you go in that folder after you've cleared it, and you go through this process that I'm doing, and uh, the image files are all going to go in there, but they're they're not going to uh, have um, uh, file extensions. Right, so you can see the files in there. And what you do is you, you get a bolt rename utility um, and rename them. Now, I, I don't think that this is necessarily the, the, the best way to do this, um, but um, uh, it, it's one of the, the fastest, most effective ways um, that I've found to be able to, to, to get these images. Yeah, this is a definitely a very weird, frightening movie. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna close this. Then you put those in a folder and do uh, on your on your Streamlabs. Uh, you do a uh, an image slideshow, and then the slideshow is going to show uh, the gifts. And it's my it's my understanding. I was reading some technical documentation on how this stuff is being handled in real time, and it's I think it's going out to GPU, and there's a certain set amount of uh, GPU memory that's devoted to this. So these um, these image groups, it's it's only it, it, it's going to go. I got this much memory. It's not going to load everything in the folder, right? So it's going to go alphabetically forward from what what's first in their folder, and then it's going to hit its limit, and that's all the sequence that you're going to get, right? Now, uh, the issue with that is, is I think it becomes boring. Um, you know, if you get a it, over time, you know, you could you could uh, begin adding and, and collecting all this. Uh, um, collective clipping of human culture, right? You could collect it into folders. And uh, I, I think you could probably script a way to like uh, take the first group of images and put a put a Z uh, at the at the beginning of the file name. And then they'll drop down the list and then when you restart, uh, whatever the next group alphabetical group is that it can hold, it's gonna bring those up, right? And then you'll be able to see that you, you run that for a couple of days and then continue that process. And then you can cycle through uh, larger groups. Now, uh, again, I think, you know, well, I don't know if I've got maybe eight gigs or 16 gigs of memory. I definitely don't have 32 or 64 or 128, that kind of crap. Um, 
what somebody might know. I've got a, a GTX 1050 Ti, like an MSI half height uh, GTX. It's about a $300 car. It's, it's not awesome. If you had a $15,000 uh, computer system, you might be able to do really incredible stuff uh, in, in real time and comparable to what I'm doing here. But if you got an old, uh, you know, the, 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 the 1050 Ti, I got it for under, it was almost $200 when I got it. And it was only Bitcoin mining that drove the price up. Now, now the used, uh, the used 10, uh, GTX 1050 Ti's are, are expensive again, over $300. But I, I don't know, it'll probably cycle around and they'll drop down again. And I'm going to be looking for, you know, for those. I'd like to gradually add um, high-end graphics cards. Um, even to the older computers, you know, as they become really, really cheap to the point where people are throwing them away, then then you can put stuff on those machines, those older machines, and then load those machines up with all the best of the best stuff of that time period. Like you can go uh, back and, and download Where's DVDs from archive.org for the year 2000 or something and get all the software that you just don't you know, connect it to the internet, right? And if you want to stream with it, right? Just uh, 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 record, you know, isolate the machine, set it up like it was the year 2000, and don't connect it under any circumstances to the internet. And then it'll it'll scream, it'll it'll run great, and uh, and get on there and, and screen record, record your content, right? And then uh, uh, you know you can put a VLC source. Yeah, and, and stream that, you know, so, you know, uh, get the best definition that you, you can put a VLC source, uh, as, as, uh, and, and then run a stream like that and, and stream your game, your, your 2000 game or whatever. Right. Wouldn't that be cool? All right. So there's ways you got to figure it out. Uh, so let's see. I don't think I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm trying to do better with these objective things, but I don't, know. I don't think I'm getting it. No death match tickets. Okay. A lob and a jailer. Okay, guys, thanks for joining. The Thing is one of those horror movies that I don't want to watch, but I watch it anyway. <laughs> uh, even though I don't like it. these guys it's an onslaught oh gouch momonga you are just so so <clears throat> annoying okay so what should i momonga momonga damn that was a total fail Okay. Hello. You are on. Swear to us. Bye. Oh. Help. Thank you. That's Momonga. I need him. Momonga. There you go. <laughs> You're death. <laughs> you are so annoying. I'm gonna get my weakest mech. You better just run.
Almost got Momonga. He's got one hit point. Please kill him. Desk launcher. Wuss. Wussy. I guess I should get proximity to the enemy with uh, with this guy. Don't run away from me. Good. Oh, you're mad? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're mad? Oh, gee. I'm gonna die. I might as well kill you first. Mm. Mr. Uh, 16, one, one point six million a credit uh, disc launcher wussy guy. Can't hit stuff, so you get a disc launcher. Oh yeah, I'm out of range. Ah ha 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 ha! He's gonna kill me. Oh, please save me! Help! I'm gonna stay in this and see if any of my guys come back in for the second round. Momonga. Oh. Hey, uh, two amigos. Hi, when did you send that message? Are you still there? Can you send another chat so I can know if you're s still there? You, you, did you, did you add me? I put my number up there, but well, actually, I don't know if that's the number of the thing that I'm on. Actually, because I switched between several accounts. Um, my, my, my daughter's and. Um, you, you still there? Okay, okay, I see. All right, I, you know, I, I don't think any of those guys are in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, jump out of this right quick and go add two amigos. Okay. Why is it not the three amigos? Okay, let, let me see. He is 517. Wait, I'm going to copy and paste. Uh, control C. I'm trying to get better about that. Okay. Now, uh, uh, search. What? Yeah, that's it. Tommy got Oh, look, he's got the same name. Okay, did you add me? Do I have space? Neil be for me. Ninety-two. I, I should. I should have space. So, did you add me, guy? I mean, 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 create a match. Two amigos, I need two versus two, and I, I hope you'll play. If you play uh, with it's, uh, it's me and you against them, I'll try to shoot good footage of you for the stream. You can be the star of the stream. Uh, that, that's what I want to try to practice my skill on. Uh, if, if people come on my stream and they, they, uh, they give me the, the two versus two or, or one of my objective things that, that, that I need. What I'll, I'll try to do is accompany you and uh, get good shots of you showcasing your expertise. You, are you making a match, two amigos? Hello? Um, let's see. See, if I create a match, then, uh, and you create a match, this is a problem, and people should know this. If I'm a, if I'm trying to join a match with somebody, we need to decide who's going to create the match, right? I would prefer two amigos to create whatever he wants, um, or if it's a girl, whatever she wants, um, uh, and then and then add me, and then I will join. And the reason I do that is because if I just jump in and create mine, if I don't know, and two amigos creates one, then he's going to show to me as unavailable and waiting for a team. Right, and I'm going to show to him as unavailable and waiting for a team. I think it would be cool if they figured out how to how to detect that in the game itself. Two amigos, can you hear me? Ah, funny Jean. Got 10 guys. So I don't see two amigos as available. 
I think he added me. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not looking at this. Oh, I, I sent the invite, but I'm not sure Two Amigos has accepted my invite yet. Um, blah, 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 blah. what shall we do? See if he's there. And I can message him directly. I had some good chats with a black man, and I love to get him on my stream because, uh, <clears throat> He's really got some good moves. There's Lugo Mango. Modern cognitive neuroscience has, has proved that, uh, you know, uh, when you when you see stuff, your your brain actually fills in a lot of information a lot of times. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I noticed that you know, like when I, I see a name going, but you know, there's a bot uh, that I always call Origami, and his name is something actually complicated. I don't see where this guy added me. Tomigos, are you there? Tomigos. Hello? I know, by the way, you know, I know pe people that were like uh, left hanging. I'm sorry about that. I was I was trying to get to some commentary on uh, Eric von Stroheim as uh, the man you love to hate. Um, and uh, there's a... Uh, a guy that when you see the movie Stalingrad, which I, I you know, I have mixed feelings about about the film. Um, but the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, here's the guy that's doing a, an Eric von Stroheim I I imitation. So the thing that's interesting about it is, uh, uh, you know, He's playing some Obersturmfuhrer, right? And he's, he's, you know, trying to look and act like Eric von Stroheim, the man you love to hate. But that, in, in an apolo a, a not, a, you know, a, an apologist movie uh, for Germany, right? You're on thin ice, I think, when you're, um, you know, Stroheim presented himself as a, uh, as uh, representing this kind of thing as an actor and he, he made fame with that but when you you think about his appearance in Stalingrad knowing he as an actor was a Jew it's disturbing I, I find it a little bit disturbing and, and the, the the thing is is the 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 guy the actor in Stalingrad? And I'm sorry, uh, uh, it's terrible that I, I have forgotten his name. But you, it's obvious that he's doing the Stroheim routine. Like I have Eric von Stroheim here above my uh, above my camera, you know, so you can see what he looks like. Um, and he plays a, a Nazi, or a guy is like sort of imitating him in Stalingrad, and. Uh, 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 in the in the Stroheim tradition, uh, being a ruthless, uh, terrible person that you just hate, right? The man you loved to hate, as he was called. Okay, so this this actor uh, in the film, one of the the Wehrmacht soldiers or whatever, sees the uh, summary execution of a prisoner. It's it's like uh, they they've got a forced march in, in in bad weather, and a guy falls down, and uh, uh, first uh, he's the the Einsatz group an officer or whatever kicks him and kicks him several times trying to get him to get up and walk 
when he doesn't, he guns him down. You know, he murders him. And uh, the good German soldier or whatever has to report it to his commander. Right? And he's like, I got to talk to the, the, the guy in charge. And when he gets to him, it's a guy imitating Stroheim, right? So Stroheim, Stroheim in reality is a Jewish person. So, so that's why I, I sort of find it, it disturbing. So, so he gets to the guy, and the guy's standing there in the rain in this raincoat, and he's got this huge grin on his face, just awful, creepy. And when the guy is like, it was a violation of the G- Geneva Convention, and, and, and you know, he arbit- it was a summary execution or whatever. And the guy that's imitating Stroheim, his line is, what is this Jewish shit? You know, like human rights and... and uh, He's just grinning. He's like, you got to be kidding me, right? And, um, yeah. Uh, I, The first time I saw Stalingrad, I said, that was brilliant. That was really perfect for, you know, he says something like, you did right. You know, like, what is this Jew stuff? You know? <laughs> Crazy? You know? Yeah. He summarily executed people. That's what we did. We're not Jews. And that's very, you know, that's the very Nietzschean element where, where if, you, if you read uh, human all too human, you know, that's where Nietzsche complains that the worst, you know, you know, crime that the Jews perpetrated on human civilization was Jesus, right? Trying to heal the sick. And Nietzsche is like, the sick, you should get away from them. Kill them. <laughs> Uh, you should you should heal the strong, right? <laughs> Take care of strong people. Um, Jews didn't voice Jesus on human civilization, and you know he was just a sky as one individual, um, and pro and probably I I, I personally, yeah. Given that very early on. Um, uh, the commentary that was written about him as an individual, the earliest stuff, Celsus or whatever. Celsus was like, well, everybody knows that uh, 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 Jesus was uh, illegitimate uh, child of a, a Roman standard bearer named, named Tiberius Pantera, right? And uh, uh, I, recently, um, I thought that Celsus' writing was all lost, and the only thing that survived was a refutation by an early church father named Origen. Uh, and I've never been able to get through that. It's very. First of all, he goes on and on. About, I shouldn't even be writing about this, you know. Uh, this guy. It's not. It's beneath uh, refutation, right? That that uh, that uh, the Virgin Mary was not a virgin. Jesus was uh, mixed uh, heritage. <laughs> Uh, but this is what this guy sells us. It's like he, apparently he wrote, "Yeah, everybody knows that that uh, uh, her her husband uh, she was found in adultery and and uh, her husband had mercy on her. You know that she was sent uh, down into Egypt to have the child and uh, you know give it up or whatever and and then uh, come back to her family in Palestine or in uh, Israel at the time." Come back to her family and uh, and go on from there, and uh, that that's why you get in the earliest stuff in the Gospel of Mark that um, uh, Jesus, uh, when he gets a following and all these people are following him around, and he gets back to his hometown in the Gospel of Mark, uh, uh, his family shows up, the quote unquote Virgin Mary and all that stuff. <laughs> They're like, he's crazy. <laughs> He's lost his mind, but tie him up, you know, and bring him out here. And uh, uh, so they, uh, the the people that are near him, say your your mother and your brothers are here, uh, and uh, they ask us to bring you out to them. And Jesus repudiates. He's like, who are, who are my? He repudiates his own mother and brothers, his own family, and he says, uh, who are my uh, mothers and uh, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Uh, not these people, but those who do the will of my Father in heaven. <laughs> if all that stuff with Luke and the three my- wise men, all that stuff that came later, if all that was real, the finding in the temple, if all that was true, if Mark is the, and you know, we know Mark is the earliest commentary on it. <laughs> if all that was really, 
really true, uh, then why why weren't they celebrating his return? Why were they saying that he was insane and that he needed to be uh, tied up and carried out, brought back home? <laughs> um, so I think it's very possible that, that um, yeah, he was in some kind of difficulty that precipitated his, uh, it radicalized him and led him to change human civilization and throw everything down. And of course he was instantly killed when near the Passover he, you know, rode in on a donkey, you know, whatever. Um, I'm waiting for two amigos, but he, he's never showed up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let's see, I'm, I'm gonna try this one more time. People are starting to show up. Hmm. Well, thanks a lot. You know, I need to take note of these people that don't join on. I understand now why. Uh, Okay, Evil Dragon, Soul Reaper, Player, Ronaldo. And I'm not, I'm not gonna bother you again, guys, if you don't wanna join. But if you don't get it together, you know, during your hangar, why are you, why are you not joining? The Atomy is a friend, what's the point? Alright, um, I'm not going to make it. I would really have to struggle. I'm not going to struggle. I want to repeat something, you know, when, when I, I, I was little, you know, I had my, my mom was like, uh, oh, yeah. you know, she had stuff she wanted to do, my school teachers had stuff that they wanted to do. I had personal things that I wanted to do. Listen to the Beatles and watch cartoons. But also, you know, you needed to keep on top of. It's like one, one of the things my, my mom was like trying not to get to get me to not watch uh, watch TV. She was like, uh, people are glued to the TV all the time. But it's like you would go to school and all the kids that were neglected. This is the thing I realized later on. It's like the kids, uh, their, their parents were not there, or they were, their parents were drunk, or they were just sitting there in front of the TV. So by and large, since most of the parents were neglecting their children, um, you go to school and everybody's talking about the, the TV shows, right? So so you really feel like the pressure, because you're just totally, when the, everybody's talking about the TV shows, you know, you're just like totally... Uh, not part of things, you know. So I wanted to listen to music. Yeah, I wanted to do that. I wanted to stay on top of the TV show so I could talk with people at school. I wanted to do some, you know, I didn't want to get a whipping, so I wanted to do stuff that my mom and my teacher wanted to do. At least try. Right? Uh, but what I, what I got early on for my mother was, you know, I'd be there in my room and I'd have music playing and I'd be watching a television program uh, with a book open. I'm trying to do a bunch of things at once. Circumstances were kind of demanding. 
so I was trying to do it. She's like, you can't study uh, and learn stuff while you're doing other stuff. And um, what I'm trying to do today, you know, and or the, at this time of my life, is uh, show that you can, in particular, people like me with ADHD uh, and hyperactivity disorder can uh, manage to, to get uh, a lot of times more done with this crazy method that we use. Like, you know, if you got if you got on my stream earlier and you heard me start. Uh, to talk about being disturbed about uh, Eric von Stroheim and, uh, and Stalingrad or whatever. You know it was a cliffhanger. It was several, an hour went by, uh, or, or maybe an hour and a half went by, and I said, oh yeah, by the way, I know that I didn't finish that thread. So happens I did, you know. I observed, and I, I try, you know, my various, I, I have seen people with this, uh, with hyperactivity and ADHD, I've seen them with bad outcomes. Like uh, the they 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 notice like when when I go off of a when I don't finish something right. If suddenly I go oh I'm gonna finish that and I try to rush back to it and I, uh, if I get any kind of anxiety or whatever with regard to the impression that I'm making on on my audience, um, I'll, I'll do the thing which is called I lost my train of thought. Right? And it, w what's happening is you're starting to grasp at something when your mind is on something else. You need to go with it. You know, the the the, the it was a natural phenomena that drew you off of uh, completion of the narrative uh, 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 course that you were you were on. Something something happened that prevented that from happening. Any kind of tension, anxiety, or, or sudden sudden struggling. Oh my God, I've got ADHD. What am I going to do? Right, that that's uh, actually just physically bad for your brain, and it, it, uh, advocate, it a activates. Uh, you know, if your heart rate goes up at all, you're really drawing uh, blood uh, circulation away from the prefrontal cortex. Right, so you need to just go with it. And and you know, I I noticed um, as long as I'm. Ouch. Man, what are you doing with the, over there, there, man? Dang. Um. If you relax your mind, you know, I, I, I'll if if I run off course, if a dial, if a digression takes up all the available time uh, for a conversation on one day, I could be three days later and still know. Oops, sorry. Banana Jama. Uh, I know your perviosity is uh, your blueness uh, has protected you. Ooh, I got chimichanga. Chimichanga. Uh, all right, but but I I'll remember uh, many days later that I went off course and I didn't finish what I wanted to say. I have that capability. Now uh, I would argue that uh, if you're if you're constantly going into this freak out, every time you run off course with a digression because you have a hyperactive mind, uh, that your uh, ultimately your outcome is going to be worse. You're going to experience depression, stress, and all that kind of stuff. Just relax. Don't ever go, I lost my train of thought. You didn't lose your train of thought. There's something big that you need to say now that you're on track for. See, he's coming for me. Dang it. And I'm not ready. Come on, get him. Thank you. Who was that? Yellow hat man, my biggest pal. Can always scout on you when the chips are down. See, I, you know, I didn't really focus on him. I focus on staying alive. Like, uh, how can I? Uh, uh, I didn't go. Oh, you're mad at me. Well, I'm mad at you. <laughs> right. And the opportunity that availed itself is some other bots were coming up, and he was, since he's a bot and he's programmed to do this revenge coin thing. That's my, my theory. See, there he is again. He's mad. He's theoretically mad. He's gonna kill me. He's gonna kill me. He's gonna kill me. I gotta get out of his way. Help! Yeah, good. 
<laughs> now that he's been killed several times, according to my observation, I'm gonna die. Hmm. <clears throat> according to my observation, he's gonna come after me even more strongly and uh, potentially in an even more profoundly stupid manner. And I need to take advantage of that, like understand how the bot works and leverage uh, the bot's behavior uh, uh, strategically for your uh, success in the game. We're in the dark about how, how the bots are programmed, but as I mentioned, if you, if you, follow, if you follow my stream, you know, I had this um, experience with Gal Galway Gal where, where um, I was about to get Nemesis on her and I decided not to shoot her. And when she ran up to me, I didn't shoot at her. I just froze. I was like, go ahead and shoot me. It was a, a, a free for all. And uh, <laughs> free for all death. Oh, let's go. But the, in, the profoundly interesting thing is that when I didn't try to fire back at her, she didn't fire back at me. And she was killed by two other uh, uh, robots. It's back there on my stream somewhere. Hours of combat footage. Um, oh. V shot eight. Uh, Macarena Dario. Man, are you there, bro? Hey, yes or no? I need two versus two, bro. Man, to get my... Um, well, actually, I, I think it's supposed to be clan mates. Two versus two clan mates. So my, my, my clan is Kudowoto clan. That's right, so how I want. Yeah. I've not been clanning around, as it were. It's like clowning. Join my clown. <laughs> My clan, my club. Could have watch your club. And do something. Two versus two. Deathmatch with me. Because I need to get my ubiquities and uh, obsequies. No, I need my dang uh, objectives for the battle for nationalization of um, Whatever it is. He behind something. Shield, buddy. I don't got two long arm shots left. Can you guys like come out from undercover so I can shoot you? There you go. You got 13k like that. Oops. Bad shot. Deserve that. Fail. Now that I have shield, I have no ammo. Okay, good. Thank you. Why is that love? That's a lot. I think those mouse click fails are really a. It's not my mouse. I think it's a game, game thing. I don't need a lock. Turn it off. Oh, I got. Oh, don't hit my shell where I'm trying to load ammo now. Oh, my shell taken now. Okay. All right, he's doing his little botesque dance.
It's Danger Noodle. Up. Oh, bad shot. Mm, good. Gotcha. Gucci, 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 Gucci. Mm -hmm, yeah. Gucci. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gucci. Mm -hmm. Tickle, 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 tickle. Man. Mm -hmm. Stop shooting me when I'm trying to shoot you. <laughs> Boom. Mm. Mm, there's my shield. Alright, stay up here a little bit longer. Oh, yeah. Did somebody talk? No, nobody. I just glanced back in my chat. Nobody. That's a skill, too, keeping track of uh, uh, your chat. We're closing out on the end of the show. It's almost the end of the show. Sorry, Paradigm. Grab her. Take her revenge. This is my last match, and I'm gonna um, go in and my all my new alter ego, which is Smash Lap Draw. See what happens. That's not a bot. I don't think that's a bot. <sighs> 
Ouch. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, it looks like we're kind of neck and neck now. It's a guardian, too. Crap. There you go. Somebody, lady and trout? Uh -huh. I'll be your trout, baby. It is a lot. Come on, take that control point back. Good girl. That's what I mean. on the last legs of things. And yeah, I don't, I don't think I got all that stuff I need to get. And I'm, yeah. <clears throat> In four hours, I did not get it without spending, you know. I think it's, it's yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm a little bit better. Uh, you know, I'll take one more look. Um, where do I gotta go? Okay, I gotta go here. For the Derby event, let's say. Pilot levels. Use 100 A coins. MVP seven times in two versus two deathmatch. This, this is what I'm really short on right here. I'm trying to focus on it. It didn't work. People didn't join me. Uh, upgrade the rank of a mech or weapon two times. Win 15 battles with friends. Nine out of fifteen. Win ten two versus two deathmatch battle with clan mates. Okay, that's four control points. Yeah, I'm bad about getting control points. I'm bad about that. And I, I guess it's logical. It's a it's a defensive role thing. Um, Never been able to do that. Okay, I got all those other things done. <clears throat> Going for all these struggles for a shotgun? I don't even use shotguns. <clears throat> but I guess I should learn how to use them. Uh, zero. Yeah, so... I guess I should try to upgrade my weapons and implants. So let's just go down just to make sure. Um, is there anything that we can upgrade? So, Mac, 1875, can't do it. I don't have enough for uh, my MD upgrade, which is my big overarching goal. 1575 to the long arm, I can't do that. Oops, I hit the same thing again. Okay. Can't do that. What else is there? His implants. Let's check out. 15,000. Not even close. 15,000. 15,000. 15,000. Implant parts. Okay, let, let's go ahead and scrap all this stuff. Scrap those implants. That brings up, you know, gradually uh, my uh, implant parts cash is going to increase, but very slowly. <clears throat> All right, let's look at this guy. The, this is uh, what I really, really want to, uh, this is what I'm shooting for with my A coins, 220s. Yeah, uh, I've, I've just a uh, few hundred more A coins and I, I can um, rank up my MD. Can't do it now. Let's see. Can't do this. I don't have a secondary weapon. When his when his energy uh, level goes up, I'll be able to do that. Okay. Now, her. Let's check out her implants. Fifteen thousand, and she's got to have a rank. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, fifteen thousand. That's not going to happen. Um. Can't do anything with her. Okay, that's two robots out of the way. Okay, let's let's look at this. All right, weapon one is the missile rank. Let's see, maybe I can upgrade this a bunch of times. Let's see, 
Ooh, yeah. One. Two. Three. Four. Cannot do that. No way. All right. Um, twenty-five sixty implant parts. So I need five thousand to upgrade that implant. Seventy-five hundred to upgrade that one. That's almost within reach, but no. Okay. <sighs> All right. Next one. mech can we upgrade him absolutely not we're saving for the support mech uh, upgrades nope nope okay she was in range I think for 2100 yeah I can't do it mm, not enough um, uh, implant parts either to Upgrade our impl implants. Twenty one hundred. I'm I'm close, but pilot marks are yeah. It's just not enough. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, the Panther. Cannot do it. Check out the thermal lens. Can't do it. It's an acorn thing. Uh, the, since I've, I've prioritized the MD, I just have to face that I can't, I can't do anything with him. Um, and, uh, I'm going to accept this guy. Um, well, that's the end of that. Okay, put us in a five versus five. Got it, Nate. The, the fierce... Oh, this is Scape 211. Uh, is that the Scape 211? Scape 211, tell more jokes, man. Because I'm not. For me, I, you know, well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm probably not important. It's, it's really a challenge, I think, to. To get me to watch your watch your stream because I just flat don't have time to watch. Uh, but but Skip to Eleven is, is big enough that. Uh... You got SRG. Thankful of that. Good man, this is excellent footage. SRG, please. Yeah, I hope. I hope. Yeah. Escape to eleven. Oh, are you the escape to eleven? Are you just a bot or, or or just a poser? Gotta need that. Uh, if I can see some Skate to 11 action. Maybe I'm going to take him out. Oh, dang you. Skate to 11. Stink. Stink bomb. Help. Can you get away from him? Oh, well. <laughs> Where is he? Is that him? There he is. Dang. Let me just look at your record for a minute. I enjoy that. Okay, so potentially I could get Skip to 11. He's one of these guys over here. Here he comes. Alright. Why don't you just come over here, dude? Don't you want to have a little action?
I'm too tight in this channel to really have a chance. Okay, I've got, I've got, I've got a possibility here. Yeah, there we go. Or was that escape to 11? A Pikachu. Yeah, he killed me again. That's cool, especially if you're streaming. Yeah, I get a moment of stardom while you incinerate me with your superior superiorness. Oops. Good. Pikachu. Thank you for a thumbs up. That's very honorable of you. Here, skip to 11. Skip to 11. Skip to 11. Skip to 11. Yeah. How many times can I be killed by skip to 11 in a surge? I don't have a surge. I don't have that kind of money. Now, um, I'm going to stay in this team in case this is really straight to 11, so I have a little bit of appearance on the, on the scene. Um, Is he there? No, he's not. I'm, I'm leaving. I, I got something to do. I'm gonna check in here one more time and then I'm gonna switch out. I, I'm going over, uh, oh well, this is my rule. I'm gonna accept this. Um, you know, I, I expect people uh, to just drop everything and join me. So I, I should drop everything and join people. You, you know, I'm going over time here. If my daughter comes in, it's, it's about time for her to wake up. She has been waking up um, about this time. Sometimes. So I do drop everything when she comes in here, which means battle, whatever, whatever's going on. Okay, we don't have, uh, what's his name? Skip to 11. Too bad. Oh, where's, where's SRG? Is that, is that him? Sabir. I don't know where they went. Uh, I'm sorry, SRG. I wanted to, I wanted to go with you so I could, uh, get some footage of you. But I'm not sure how smart it would be for me to go all the way over there at this point. <clears throat> we'll try again next time. Wait, SRG. Okay, now I'm gonna follow you. Okay. Good, good. I, I like that. He's sensible. Let, let, let's follow our pal SRG. See how he does. Oh, buddy, oh, buddy, oh, buddy, oh, SRG pal. Wow us with your expertise. Regale us with your skillful man. Oh. Whoops. You dirty rotten. You ruined my uh, my my footage, right? Oh, <laughs> there serves you right, and you're mad? Ha 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 ha! Oh yeah, okay. My dang turret's locking up. Here, it's doing it again. Up, uh, uh, freezing. Up, come on. A Zephyr with a disc launcher. Maybe I'll stay with this guy. Am I going out, you know, to the crossfire? I hope not. Oh! Uh, hmm. Dang it! There's that surgery. Cool, I'm gonna stick with you, buddy.
give me a chance to watch how this guy plays. I like it. Good, that was fun. And I think I got some good shots. That's good. I'm going over, but, but the thing is, is, uh, I'm introducing my new uh, uh, player here. And, and this is sort of like a tribute to Glaive. Lancer blueprints. Auto cannon four. You know I love an auto cannon four. Um. Free macarena goodies. Uh, oops, I shouldn't hit that twice. Now it's opening two browser windows. He's got two auto counts. I kind of love it. All right, uh, let's see. Unlock max lock three. Five twenty-five blueprints. Use two thousand credits. Earn two hundred XP. Okay. Right, Derby event. Day one. Okay. Zero five objectives achieved. That's great. Thermal Lance unlocked. Escape. 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 Yeah. Have I got a back item right
I don't have enough for the Juggernaut. I guess the Juggernaut's gonna be the first one that I can afford. Um... my way. graduated into a mech with a name.
I'm not trying to block you, dude. He's a bot. Should be a bot. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Push button. Feeling nervous? Yeah. It's just squared away. Oh, it's actually hitting him. Kill. Vale, clinical. <coughs> ouch, 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 help. <clears throat> RPGs, is it? Yeah, okay, come on. Oh, I'm in tutorial mode still. This is a new. This is Smash Lab Jaw. Pale Clinic. Pale Clinic. Wow. Mm. 20 minutes over, can you believe that? My daughter's still not up. Probably mom stayed up late. I forgot that. That's the power of the Paragon. Is that you hit the space bar and you go a little bit faster for, for a while. Burst of speed. I don't want to go down here. <gasps> See why? <laughs>
so pretty fun. Come on, you know you want to. Step up. Scrape David. The bears. Oh, Dr. Worm. That was my thing. Turn the team. God's the team. Plays the kill me. Uh. That's an act. Wah 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 two. There you go. Look, we got matching suits. It's swerve. Nah, swerve. What's up? RPGs, is it? Oh, I hate those. No damage fall off. Yeah. Swerve, man, what's up? Come over here. Hey, Swerve. Man, Swerve. Man, Swerve. Swerve, Swerve, Swerve. Man, give me a minute, Swerve. 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 Boss Swerve. You sure you want to stand there like that with your... You sure that's the best place to... Well, it looks like it's going to be rock without you. This time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Junk Jive. I, I often said that's a horrendous name. Junk means heroin, right? And Jive means marijuana. A lot of people, you'll you'll find that uh, people don't remember the slang. If the slang gets old enough, I, I've I uh, worked in a, a, a rough rough neighborhood, tough side of town, or whatever, and I, I repeatedly ask adults, you know, well, younger than me, often. If they knew the origin of jive, that it, and that they, not a, nobody knew that it meant stoned, a uh, jiving, you know, means, man, you stoned, you smoking that, you viper, you're, you smoking that reefer. They don't remember, you know, it's like they don't even use jive anymore, the word jive, right? And uh, I, I don't know what they're calling, you know, I, I know heroin is, uh, oh, it got called horse, look as fat, don't kill me, man, stay, I'm giving a schwa. The fierce of schwa. Hey, Bacchus, man, what's up? There's that schwa, that evil schwa. Stand back, schwa. Please stay away. Beware what you wish for. Beware what you search for. You might find it. A schwa gonna die. 
I would love to be the coup de gras guy though. Aha, uh -huh, I got a swap. I got revenge badge. Now I want a t-shirt with a revenge badge on the I'm, I'm gonna have to end this. I, I'm re I've really gone over almost 30 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna leave this battle. Uh, but yeah, that, I'm, uh, it's the best thing I, I've done in a long time. I, I, I mentioned earlier, you know, that, uh, that I, I was sort of feeling an experience of a sense of loss, you know, when I found out. Uh, there's so many bots, you, you wouldn't guess, you know, that all of them are bots, but a, a lot of them, you know, 400 and something are, are bots. So, um, in honor of, um, and I can't even find it, something happened with this guy on my stream. Um, I hope one day somebody finds it and tells me where it was. For some reason, I was looking for Smash Lamp Dumb because something funny happened. I think it was on the screen. And that's one of the, you know, it's like I looked for Galway Gal because I thought she was mad. Uh, and I wanted to say, uh, be my friend, you know. Um, but she was a bot. She's on the certified bot list. So, in honor of uh, Smash Lamp Jaw, Battle Master. Uh, win five battles. Okay, I can't do that. 2500. Okay. Spawn Paragon and earn three gold medals for kills. Did that. Good. See, this is all you do all these objectives and you got these crates that have blueprints on them. Blah, 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 blah. blah, blah. Alright, so. Um, Time to stop. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I, I'm gonna go check out, check on my daughter, and uh, uh, this is my new. Is see, it still just says. Well, do I have to change that? See, it doesn't let me confirm it. So that's... Uh, let, let me see if I put something weird. Yeah, okay. Uh, see, it, it won't let me name myself uh, Jaw. Okay, uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna do this yet. Figure out if I can do it. Uh, maybe they they stop that from being able to. Um. I I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll see. The mystery deepens, right? Because it, it, at one point, I'm, I'm pretty sure people could name this. I, I heard people were doing that. Name themselves uh, with bot names. Um. 
which I, I think it should be allowed. Uh, very cool, in fact. I want to name myself Smash Lamp Jaw after the legendary Smash Lamp Jaw. Okay. Her innate skill is assault damage. Uh, is the uh, auto cannon and long arm are they assault weapons? Come on, I'm running out of time here. Um, let's see, derby event. Again, all my day one things done. That's good. Alright, uh Escape. 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 You look at my inventory. Attacker. Well, I'll look at the weapons and see if they're assault weapons. Assault. Okay, so the auto cannon four is an assault weapon. And I've got I've got two of these. So Let's see. Uh, put red on there. Parent. Okay, so she's riding that. And uh, then as far as implants, auto cannon. Uh, well, okay. Auto cannon damage. Install. She got another implant. So auto cannon magazine. Install. Okay. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. That, I hate that. Okay, I've got to choose the implant slot and then install, right? Or it just replaces the, uh, the one that's already in there. All right, so... as far up as she can go. All right. And I could upgrade him. Let's see. Can I afford an upgrade for this guy? Yeah. All right. As far as her, I brought her up as high as I can get her to go. All right, so <clears throat> all right. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see. You